Welcome to The Interesting Podcast, episode number 151. This episode is with my new friend Toru Masamune, and he was a blast to hang out with. You probably guessed that when you saw the length of this episode. <laughs> we covered so many things! Uh, we talk about him carrying Leonardo DiCaprio on a beach in Inception, working on Shredder's speech in Japanese and English at the same time on the 2014 Ninja Turtles movie, basing Kira Kozu from the Kung Fu Panda show on his uncle, and how he was actually on crutches for his Ghost of Tsushima audition. What's even crazier is that he graduated from MIT. We talk about how his dad was actually a scientist there, how he still tutors students, his family's dynamics, how his education has helped his acting pursuit, and so much more. Toru's fantastic. What a great dude. So uh, yeah, get ready for a good time. Strap in, my friends. So without further ado, please enjoy this episode of The Interesting Podcast, number 151, with Toru Masamune. Theme song time. Doing? Good, good. Um, I was, uh, uh, I was nice to connect on Zoom, right? <laughs> yeah, yeah. Some some sort of signal into the world. <laughs> yeah, well, you know, in a, in a weird sort of way, um, you know, and I don't know about you, but I've I've actually kind of gotten used to the quarantine. Like, like I same, same. You know, friends they're overrated, right? Yeah, who needs them? I, got, <laughs> yeah, exactly. I, got, I was gonna get rid of mine anyway. <laughs> yeah, yeah. Well, I I was joking the other day. I was just like you know, because I. I'm I'm pretty I, I'm pretty good. I tend to adapt to situations pretty. That's I guess something I do. Sure. Well, and and um, and uh, probably probably all all of us actors, right? Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> it's kind of part of our lives, I guess. But um, yep. but the um, but I was joking with someone how you know, and I just said, you know what? Well, now here's all that extra time I wish I had. Good point. Uh, I have, and I and and I've been using it. And after a year, I I, I feel like I'm a better man. Uh, yeah, there you overall. go. And uh, and uh, I was joking. I says now I realize how um, how mankind has been holding me back all these years. Yeah. <laughs> That's right. <laughs> you finally ascended. I knew yes. you could. I knew you yeah. could. <laughs> yeah, exactly, exactly. I just like, need to get all those people off my back. <laughs> That's right. <laughs> I, I feel you. I feel, have you have you picked up any new skills in the last year? Um. Let's see skills. Well, you know, I've I've. I've um well cooking is something I oh, rediscovered. Really? Yeah. yeah, which uh which was you know, I my 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 sister actually went to culinary school. My mom was uh um uh she's had she's actually had she had one recipe published, so I guess oh, that's cool. something. Um, right on. and 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 uh, um my um you know, and then my sister did go to culinary school. She's she's in pharma, so like she's a Sure. She's got a PhD in toxicology, blah, blah, blah. So, no so big she's deal. starting a she, yeah, she's starting a pharma company. She yeah. did try to start a baking for a while. Yeah. And uh and she just couldn't make it go and she felt so depressed. And I and I was being supportive, you know, because being of course. The, the artist saying, Hey, you know, you just gotta pick yourself up. Because you know what? I can't do this. I gotta go back to my life in big pharma. Yeah. Uh, and and like <laughs> a week later, she, she got a job for like over a couple hundred thousand dollars. You know, I said, you know what? I don't I don't feel sorry for it. And that's she, right. She, never mind. Never mind. <laughs> she decided that that's going to be a a, a retirement a hobby for her. But sure. what she, what we did pick up in that process is we all became total foodies. Oh, and, okay. Uh, and so we've we've eaten. I don't know. Like we've had some crazy dinners. Like like yeah. Uh, um, uh, mainly in this country, but yeah. So you know, sure. so a lot of things. So that's that's definitely a foodie. Sure. And uh, I never cook just because of my lifestyle. And um, sure. I, I'm in Los Feliz. I don't know. If you okay. Know yeah. yeah. Mm -hmm. Are you from a, uh, no, I'm where in, are you? where are you? I, where the hell are you? <laughs> I'm in a bubble. Uh, I'm in a, I'm in Florida actually. Cool. Yeah. Cool. Yeah. I'm, I'm in Naples, Florida, which is like oh. way Southwest. If you go, if you're looking at Florida and you have Miami yeah. on one coast directly across is Naples. Yeah. On the, on the of, West coast, West coast. Okay. Yeah. Yep. Yeah. I've been, in, I've been in Miami and, uh, 
Uh, I shot a thing up in uh, Cocoa Beach. It was an, a- oh, yeah. an, an astronaut thing. Yeah, yeah. Um, so that was kind of cool. And um, so that's my exposure to Florida, which I love. I, lo- I love Florida. It's awesome. It's its own yeah. world. It's its own thing. We have uh, all of it. <laughs> good yeah, it was good or awesome. bad. Yeah. So, so, um, yeah. That's pretty cool, so, though. So, 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 anyway, but, but, um, so I, I, uh, love food, as I guess we all do. And, yeah, uh, I never cooked just because I'm Los Feliz and, mm-hmm. uh, whatever. Uh, and then obviously this thing hit and I just, you know, hit it over to the grocery store, loaded up and started cooking. And, there you uh, go. It's still a very, you know, um, bachelor y kind of cuisine for sure. Mm-hmm. But, but uh, I started doing it again. So I don't know if that's something I developed, but I actually um, kind of got it down. Yeah. So, so there I you actually go. I cook most of my meals now. So that's kind of a, a new thing for me. Sure. I'm <laughs> yeah. terrible at cooking. I, you know, my problem is I'm not good at multitasking. Yeah. I'm very good at like one thing, I'll do this. Like, Year, a few years ago, my wife was like, all right, you're going to make dinner now. I'm like, all right, cool. What do you want to be cold? Because <laughs> yeah, I'll, yeah. exactly. I'll, like, I'll do the beans first and then I'll do the meat. But the beans are going to be cold and the meat will be warm. You can pick because well, I'm doing well, one know, at a time. Well, you know, what was interesting. You know, my sister um, and she, she had kind of an interesting story is that she um, she was kind of the, the brainiac of the family. And, and mm-hmm. she was working for Pfizer and she, her husband at the time, um, were there when um, uh, Viagra came out. Oh, perfect. And yeah, right. And then it's funny because <laughs> she actually uh, mentioned it to me, you know, and she said, you know, you might want to look into this. And, you know, of course, I'm laughing. She goes, you know, yeah. we've, we've got a, you know, we're working on this drug. I, I think she was allowed to say it, but she's working on a drug, you know, for to solve male erectile problems. And, and you might want to look into it. It's good. Yeah. <laughs> At the time, I, I started making like, you know, whatever, you know, erection jokes, like, sure. like those it, idiot. <laughs> Actor, yeah, I'm fine. Okay. <laughs> no, I, I immediately busted into the jokes and, and I, I didn't realize she was giving me possibly some of, you know, possibly some of the most valuable information I, I could sure. possibly have. And, and they, uh, they underwent a lifestyle change because, because it's, it's amazing how rich all those folks at Pfizer got over. Oh this. yeah. And oh, uh, yeah. I mean, really, really, I, at some point she elevated to the point I realized she's in an entirely different socioeconomic category than i am yeah it was kind of weird and uh you know that same world. schools same family you know nature versus nurture you know i realized okay yeah so um so she uh um uh um got to the point where you know they didn't need two incomes uh, mm-hmm. uh her i think her husband at the time um turned out to be kind of a jerk later so that's why i said of course of course um uh, but he so he's gone but he became uh uh you know he everybody got like you know sickly rich there and then so they, yeah. they didn't need two incomes and so she said you know what i'm gonna go and go to culinary school like i always wanted to and i'm just gonna be the executive wife and go to culinary school and she did that and there you go and uh um uh, uh um yeah so that you know that's what what she ended up doing so uh, i can't remember what my point was um is it, it's probably gonna be one of these podcasts. we like food that this is this is my whole show that's what i do <laughs> <laughs> oh, okay. <laughs> so what, what was what, what was I talking about? I don't even remember. That's why I don't even come in with questions. <laughs> yeah, you know, when I kind of read the little uh, blurb uh, on your, I said, you know what? Because you know, typically, um, and I'm sure you do this with uh, interview. You know, whatever we try to be professionals, right? And and yeah. we do our homework and blah blah blah. Yeah, I remember looking at that thing and and um, uh, I thought, well, maybe it's better if we just start just hop on and see where it goes. Cause I, did, yeah. I wasn't quite sure why you reached out to me or whatever. Yeah. <laughs> and, it, and I thought, hey, well, well, what the hell, you know, me, why not make a new friend? And hell although I yeah, did, dude. I did, I did check your Twitter and I did like, the, I did, this is where I immediately, you won my, you won me over here was you had that little gift from life of Brian. Yeah. Yeah. <laughs> and I thought, all right, all right, I'll get along with this guy. That'll I, work. I, I, that's all I need to know about this guy. All right, let's go. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> I, dude, I love it. I, I, I've been doing this for five and a half years now. And yeah. I've learned that for me, all you need is a sense of humor and we'll get along. That That's yeah. it. You can come from totally different worlds, but yep. there's that commonality where like we're people. And yeah. like when you ask someone to come on the show, I'm like, I mean, they're probably going to say no, but if they do, we're going to have fun. <laughs> yeah, <laughs> so. I think so. And, and, and uh, why not? Right. I mean, it, it's, uh, I agree. Uh, why not? I mean, especially these days. Right. And, uh, mm-hmm. um, 
I live and, my whole uh, life by that. Why not? And, and the thing I like about this is that I don't know. I don't know about you, but yeah, you're probably like me. I don't know. You probably got in trouble for talking all the time. And oh yeah. yeah, I still do. <laughs> yeah. Uh, as, actually, it's funny because I was uh, once I was on this thing where I was being interviewed by this big Chinese media company or whatever. Perfect. And uh, um, we just sat down and um, uh, uh, I. I went on so many tangents. It was yeah. really, it was, it got ugly. I mean, it was, I just was hoping someone would stop me and no one sure. would. Yeah, no. no. Would. And I apologize to the, the, the woman afterwards. I said, I'm sorry. I just, I don't know. Like, why did you stop me? It's like, I just, this is your job. You're supposed to corral me. <laughs> and, and, uh, and then, and she goes, Oh no, 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 no. We, we like that when people just talk a lot. And, and, uh, and she, and she said, she, and she goes, yo, yeah, I love talking because I used to always get in trouble for talking in school. And I, yeah. I said, you do? You know, it's like me yeah. too. We just like totally <laughs> high five. We said, That's we right. realized we found our calling. You know, That's we right. <laughs> you, you just got to funnel it. That's the key, you know? <laughs> yeah. <laughs> yeah, exactly. Exactly. So, so, um, so, and uh, there are so many times too, right? Where it's sort of, you know, you're in a fun conversation. You say, yeah, it's like, wow, wouldn't that be cool if, if someone was recording this? And, right. Right. And then sometimes the court agrees and you're like, oh, well. <laughs> <laughs> that's right. That's right. Yeah, it, it, it is a weird thing, right? I mean, you probably find that is mm -hmm, mm -hmm. you do have to watch what you say. That's OK. I edit all this stuff. Nobody's going to know. Nobody's yeah, going to know. <laughs> yeah, I've said, I've said a few things where I said, oh, you know what? I don't think I was supposed to say that. So especially. Uh, it's hard. It's such a crazy time. I don't know about you, but but, you know, it just seems like every project and it's because no one wants to get in trouble yep i've just learned like most projects unless i see it unless the product i follow the productions lead and if i see that they've said something in public then yep. that's when i'm allowed to smart because a lot of times now i start thinking okay well i'm you know i'm totally cool with whatever um uh the thing i always find is weird is they don't tell you what you can and can't say right yeah. Whether you know, the NDA is whatever, but even then, you know, I'll go to the producer and say, you know, whatever. And he said, hey, can I post this picture? You know, yeah. can I say this? Can I at least say this? Because, you know, we're actors. We want to at least. Yeah, it's exciting. Yeah. We, and, you know, we have to promote. I mean, that's kind of part of our lives. For sure. I mean, um, and, and, uh, um, and I, I, uh, you know, so I'll, I'll, I'm one of these people that'll say, okay, I'm very specific. You just tell me exactly what I can, can and can't say, and I won't cross that. You can trust me. I'm not one of these people. These, I, I, you know, I, but if I'd like, if I can say something, I'd like to. Yeah. Because it makes things, anything, interviews, everything much easier. Right. And totally. And it makes everybody happier. And uh, I swear, everybody, every time I bring that up, it gets a, turns into a real tense conversation. Yeah. <laughs> and then so many people get involved and then yeah. no one wants to say anything. <laughs> And then you realize that you they're kind of you know suspicious of you now. Yeah, <laughs> yeah. It's like no, no. You should be. It should be the opposite because I'm asking your permission. You know, I, and I agree. I and, agree. And, and I don't. I, I feel like I, after uh, it comes out, it should be like that because people love behind the scenes stuff. You know what yeah. I mean? Like when you see how something's made, you're like, oh, what? There's like six people inside Job of the Hut. That's crazy. You know, it's like it. Yeah. It gives it more life, I think. You know. And I but, think they. I think they'd like that i believe because you're right because i and i've noticed that oh and that's once it once it's out too it's like no one yeah gives that crap right <laughs> it's true that's not it's so funny then all of a sudden all those conversations that were kind of tense like oh, whatever yeah exactly <laughs> <laughs> yeah as long as i can control it beforehand it's a no but afterwards, yeah yeah <laughs> and they just want you know maybe for movies i guess they're really worried about that opening weekend so as long as that's goes okay i'm well i'm talking about another era of course but sure uh, sure um but uh yeah so that's what i've noticed um uh at first first like real um like intense high security thing i've worked on um it was inception that was and yeah. this is the timing is you know first is the one of the movies of that scale that i did uh, uh and also it was about the timing where maybe even a little past, but also in social media, all those things like stuff leaking out became a deal, right? Right, right. And oh, man, yeah. so, <laughs> I mean, I, I, it was crazy. I was, I was afraid to talk to people. And there's one point where 
they like you know and even auditions right they don't tell you what the movie is and mm-hmm. like everything it's the security is ridiculous and i didn't even know you know all the the auditions are all code names yep yeah and there's one point where um you know i shot the the um you know the part in the castle oh by yep. the way i i um i was the guy that introduced the token the little uh, yeah you were or, oh yeah or, uh, i may what, or may not have seen everything what, what, you've done uh to- totem totem yes totem like yep the totem. little spin yeah. at the top and so so and at the time okay again no one tells me anything right sure and i've said just tell me what to do he goes all right uh, just take this thing and uh tell him that you uh you know you found this thing yeah. <laughs> uh, oh what is this <laughs> and then all of a sudden everybody gets really tense and there's a time when i was in the dressing room uh-huh. and i still and and i hear a bunch of i'm i'm just happy i'm working like yeah of course great. i'm working of Put course on, yeah. And, you got your uniform. and then all of a sudden I hear a bunch of people talking and then they all look at me and goes, but you never heard that, right? <laughs> <laughs> and I go, I never met you guys. I don't know. I, Nothing. You know, no, I don't even I know, know who I am. <laughs> yeah, yeah, that's right. <laughs> and uh, um, so anyway, so it's like that. And I'm on there and I'm going, all right, whatever. This is the way it's going to be. And uh, so I have no idea what any of this stuff is. And I don't yeah. even know what the movie is. It's like... <laughs> Like I, and I was afraid to ask anybody, do you know what this sure. movie is about? Sure. <laughs> I, was afraid to, I was afraid to like, otherwise I'd be like, you know, uh, sure. flagged. You're flagged walking around. Thing. You're like, it feels like I'm in a dream and they just look at you. <laughs> <laughs> That's right. That's right. Who told you that? Yeah, exactly. uh, no, it's a, it's a figure it's a phrase. Speech. It's a phrase. <laughs> <laughs> and, uh, they take your gun from you and turn it on you. <laughs> <laughs> That's right. And so, so uh, and they're testing it, right? Yeah. Yeah. So I have no idea what's going on. So they're testing it. And they flip it, right? Yeah. And so a bunch of people, you know, it's a Nolan film. So they're like, you know, 50 people standing around. Yeah. And, and we're all watching this thing as they're testing it, right? Because I, well, yeah, just they just want to figure how long before this thing actually starts wobbling is, is they want to. Oh, right, right, right. So, so for whatever shots they're trying to get. And that thing didn't fall. It was <laughs> hilarious. That thing didn't fall. And everybody started one by one. They started cracking up. <laughs> Like, but, we're gonna be but, here a while <laughs> yeah but but i thought because that was the, the test whether it was a dream or not sure so yeah, yeah yeah didn't fall <laughs> so they went so that's why everybody started cracking up that that thing would not fall <laughs> and then and i didn't know and i thought i said why oh that's kind of cool like i'm thinking oh that's cool that that thing keeps going but i didn't know why it's so funny right uh, right and then i find out later um uh uh you know when the movie comes out, why, why that? Sure. <laughs> the laughter was just really nervous because everyone starts wondering if they're in a dream. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, yeah, absolutely, absolutely. No, it was, it was yes. Yeah. Now in retrospect, I said, oh yeah, that is pretty funny. Yeah. <laughs> uh, um, and uh, and um, and the, the whole thing was interesting because I was going, um, um, uh, uh, you know, and I'd ask because I, and it was so, the security was so high in terms of anything, and you can't oh, even bet. joke about stuff like. Yeah. You know, I remember there's the onset, the camera person, I was just, you know, whatever, just chatting. Sure. And, uh, and she was just taking some pictures, blah, blah. blah. And I can't remember, I said something about, oh man, as I just, or something about how much those pictures must be worth. Sure. And all of a sudden, like, it got really tense, like, oh, but I would never, I said, no, 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 I'm just, yeah. <laughs> just saying, I'm just trying to make conversation, you know, and, sure. and, 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 and I was, you know, and I'm excited because I start realizing, well, you kind of figure, okay, oh, there's, Leo DiCaprio and I'm um, oh you know like there's a kind of interesting moment where yeah and, and even then I didn't even see when I first met him like you know on these big stars they don't actually they don't rehearse l- the physical stuff you're actually rehearsing with the stunt person oh right and they bring right. him out like the stand like it's kind of funny like they're yeah yeah above that part I guess sure and I guess it makes sense they did you know he knows what to do so they don't and he just wants to stay in character right so the first time I meet him he's coming out and he's in character so oh, like there's not even like you know and even nolan was like there there he's all that whole set's all business it's ridiculous you know sure sure you know, there's like hey, oh hey okay and then you know everything's just all business i actually wondered and, that because like different sets with different directors because you hear like spielberg sets he works with the same crew on all his movies so it's very like a machine they just knock this yep. stuff out so oh, i was wondering yeah. what a nolan set was like yeah very uh you know it's because they're huge and they're tons of people and and mm. um very little chatting i mean it's not like it's uh, in fact um 
there's one point where uh, I think when I came on and he just kind of looks at me and goes, yeah, cut his hair. So, <laughs> <I> know. <laughs> you know, like he looks at, you know, like, hey, how's sure. it going? Oh, well, nice to meet hey, you. Cool, Mr. cool. He mm. goes, yeah. Goes, yeah. Yeah, cut his hair, <laughs> and then and then and then uh, all of a sudden I'm whisked onto a um, the, the a cart. Yeah, for some reason there are two other people. I don't know what I don't even know what they were there for. They were there to hold to you down. Sure. Yeah, <laughs> something in case I, <laughs> in you in case I escaped. <laughs> in case I resisted, <laughs> and uh, and uh, and I just said to the the driver, I saying, um, well, you know, I think my job today is just not to f up, right? You yeah, know? yeah. <laughs> And he looked at me and goes, I think that's pretty much all our jobs. And yeah. then um, <laughs> hair was gone in, in five minutes. It was amazing. It, had, it was a really nice haircut too, like within, it was amazing. Get I was it. back on there and, and uh, yeah, and that's the thing I, I found is, is that, um, yeah, just like, just like in the army, it was, it was amazing. Like, and he's, uh, you know, very serious guy. And, and uh, um, there was one point where, so you're just kind of like going along and you're just trying to keep up and sure. just making sure you're not hindering you're in your lane and you're doing what you're supposed to do and you're doing it really well, you know, that kind of stuff. And, right. and, and trying to figure out what to do. And, you know, so, you know, and, and then finally I'm working, you know, rehearsing with the stunt. That was the part where I'm just bringing him on. Right. Right. And rehearsing the stunt person. And finally Leo comes in and he's like, all oh, in character. Right. Yeah. Ken Watanabe was kind of chatty, but the uh, cool. Yeah, he was pretty. We had, a, we, had a, we had a very funny chat afterwards. Uh, I, I guess I can tell you, they can tell you that later. But that's and awesome. Then, and then he, uh, um, so he comes in, and I make you know what I meet some, so you make some little funny of jokes course. Or like that. You got to break the ice. No laugh at all because he's in character. Oof. And I realized in retrospect because I did sort of this this kind of cheesy sci-fi movie earlier, and I remember I had a really big scene, and the last thing you want is the you know, whether the guy playing the yeah. <laughs> security guard, like making a job. I mean, you just don't. And I sure. realized later I should have just, and that's big movie making and big, sure. with big stars. That was, you know, he was, that was a good lesson. I right. remember thinking that is that, you know, cause I got three months prep time and I said, nothing's going to prepare me working, working to this level. Yeah. So I'll just learn as sure. I go, but don't, when, yeah. the, when, you, when the big star comes on, don't make a joke. That's not the, yeah. don't make it, do, don't do an icebreaker. Yeah. Just get to work. Icebreakers work. are not cool. Yeah. <laughs> you want to keep it cold and freezing. And, That's right. Uh, keep the ice. Uh, just the ice. We want ice. Ice. We want to pull it, just fake ice. Yeah, exactly. And so anyway, then, then I said, all right, well, that's fine. And then all of a sudden, you know, uh, we're kind of in the back and then, you know, Christopher Nolan's right on my shoulder and Leo's there and we have, we haven't really chat. We know we, we, you know, we do, the, you know, we, there's a lot of the, Hey, hey you know, there's yeah, the head yeah. nodding. Hey. Yep. And that's cool. That, or, that's, yeah. that's the, that's the, the extent the get to know each other. <laughs> yeah. Portion of it all. That's the rapport building. Okay. Yeah. That's a, yeah, the, <laughs> the, the team building. Yeah. <laughs> and so, um, um, and, uh, there was one point where we're kind of in the wings and yeah. And, uh, it was just like being on a Kubrick set, you know, I mean, the, I mean, you really see what like, yeah, 150 million will buy for you because the set, was, I just felt like, wow, this is like a, you know, a, a, like, like some Kubrick set or something. It's crazy. You know, that, that castle thing. It was, it was yeah. a soundstage. It was a soundstage. Oh, really? That's yeah. cool. Yeah. It was on Warner Brothers, I think. So wow. yeah, it's all this whole thing built inside and. Dude. And yeah, it was crazy. And it's huge and everything. I mean, it's, and it, you know, as wonderful as it looked on screen, it looked as amazing in real life. It, it really, was, yeah. I mean, it really was okay. I'm, I'm not doing my buddy's short. Sure, right yeah. <laughs> <laughs> Scale, scales a little different. <laughs> yeah. That's a little different. Exactly. <laughs> um, that's wild. And, and so, so we're in the back and I'm just, and then, you know, with that, after my failed joke with Leo yeah. <laughs> and, you know, Christopher Nolan. And that being said, everybody's actually very pleasant. So it's not sure. like it was, it was unpleasant. It was just business. Sure. And then uh, he kind of goes, all right, so I'm going to say action, but that's not for you. So that's, I'm going to tap your shoulder and then you, then you bring him in. And he goes, um, oh, absolutely. Sure. Okay. So all of a sudden everybody, everything's going down and, you know, and, and everything starts quieting down. He says, okay, sound, speed, blah, blah. And there's this weird point because, you know, I, I drag him on. I'm thinking, Here's this person. At what point is it like weird to meet to meet to lock arms with Leo DiCaprio? Like, at what point? Sure, yeah. like, <laughs> yeah. Where's the line here? Because the joke didn't fly. <laughs> <laughs> like, 
<laughs> yeah, so I'm trying to figure it. And then after they said sound speed, I'm right now. Okay, I can lock arms with them, and it's not going to be weird. I don't sure, yeah. know what I'm doing. <laughs> yeah. <wait. laughs> so, okay, yeah. now so I'm Play going. It safe. Then, Play it safe. <laughs> yeah. So so I slip my arm around it, <laughs> and, and then Christopher Nolan's right on my shoulder like this, and, and I'm going. And there's definitely that beautiful moment where I thought. Wow, how did I get here? <laughs> yeah, <laughs> it's like I'm holding uh, Leonardo DiCaprio, uh, <laughs> and Chris Nolan's like, tapping my shoulder. <laughs> yeah, it's like, he's sitting with his finger over my shoulder, like yeah. it's like, how did I get here? Okay, well, yeah. and um, yeah, so the whole thing was kind of strange, and then um, yeah, and then and then after that, oh, and then finally at the end, I had a very nice chat with Ken Watanabe. He was he was very chatty. That's In fact, awesome. he had all that old band week. Yeah, yeah, yeah. I'm bald and just at the yeah. table. And I see him outside. Oh, hey. Well, and it turns out we know some of the same people in Japan, which is what well, that was. Oh, kind cool. Of, yeah. And uh, um, he's got his makeup on and he kind of goes, he goes, you didn't know it was me, did you? <laughs> <laughs> go, oh, no, Mr. One. No, I, I knew that was you. I knew that was you. <laughs> like, sir, I've seen The Last Samurai 400 times. Okay. You're not hiding from me. <laughs> <laughs> and uh, um, yeah, so so um, so that was pretty fun. Um, and then um, then finally, you know, as we're breaking, and then um, you know, Leo DiCaprio comes out, and was, we finally wrap for that day. Mm. And he had, um, you know, and then his car was waiting. It was like some black SUV was waiting out for him. And he had some friends there. Sure. And he kind of comes out, you know, and I was just hanging out with Ken Watanabe, just kind of chatting, and he sort of then I. You know he's coming out. He kind of goes. Uh, Leo kind of goes. Oh man, so I, so I, all I know is a man. I just want to get the hell out of here. <laughs> and then, and then finally, I'm saying, okay, well now he seems to be out of character. And then where we're done, we're wrapped. So I go. Sure. Oh, by the way, uh, um, I can't remember if I call him Leo or Mr. DiCaprio, but uh, it's Mr. kind of weird Leo calling DiCaprio. Younger person. Yeah, like yeah. Ken Watanabe. I'm gonna say Mr. Watanabe, but like sure. I <laughs> yeah. like, hey, Leonardo, good job today. <laughs> <laughs> yeah. So I said, oh, by the yeah, I, yeah. And I said, by the way, it was great working with you. I guess I'll see you probably next week, right? And then he just, then he broke out. He gave me the full smile. Hey, you oh, know, like I got cool. totally got Leo DiCaprio. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> it was pretty funny. And then he disappeared into his car. That's so cool. Yeah, that was fun. So, so, you know, and that was nice. Uh, uh, and, um, and uh, then, and then later the, 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 um, DP's calling me and saying, um, yeah, so, um, okay, so next week we're going to be up at the, the beach. Is that Leo Carrillo Beach? You, 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 it sounds like you know the this area a little mm -hmm, bit. Mm -hmm. Yeah, it's up, uh, not quite at Malibu, but up towards that way. Sure, okay, cool. Uh, and uh, and he goes, and um, yeah, you'll be working with, and he stopped, and he goes, and you'll be working with, I mean, the uh, character that plays Cobb. Oh. <laughs> I, go, I know who's playing i knew who that, i re i recognize him i know who that is you know, right. all, you know so anyway and it's so silly and then later i was talking to one of the deep i'm thinking and i just gave up on even telling anybody i was even working you know which is kind of weird like as an actor if you're working on anything you, you want to at least tell a friend right yeah it's of so course exciting working's exciting and so yeah but at uh and you know yeah you know and then social media that I, that's obviously what they're mainly worried about. And I was talking to this one guy and I was saying, well, what, you know, what can I say to people? Cause it's pretty exciting for me. And, right. And uh, he was just saying, you know, he goes, ah, you know, this D I think he was an AD. Um, he was saying, Oh, I, I, I think, um, um, uh, he goes, yeah, yeah. You don't, you don't want, he basically was saying, don't say anything. Don't yep. even tell people you're working on this. And it is commercial. Uh, and, yeah. And he was just saying, he was saying, um, uh, yeah, yeah, he's talking about, I worked on a uh, dark night and, uh, there's this, and he told me some story about some kid that exposed something. He goes, yeah, you don't want to be that guy. You oh, don't no. want to be that guy. <laughs> In his eyes, you see that kid's dead now. <laughs> yeah, 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 exactly. <laughs> so what happened to, I guess you're asking too many questions. Um, Puts his the, finger in your mouth. And then sure. finally, and finally, I'm going, all right, all right. And he goes, but, but, which is true. And he said, don't worry about it. He goes, when this thing comes out, you're not going to have to do any promotion. He goes, and yeah. it's so true. Like sure <laughs> yeah. enough, you're, you're, 
page blows up the second you don't have to do anything. You literally right. realize, no, I don't have to do any of my own promotion because it's, you don't sure. have to. And it's just, yeah, so don't worry about it. Just, you know, and then I was in, when I was filling out my contracts at the end, you know, I just think asking one last time, this is why I learned just never asking because, so yeah. what can I, can I say? And, and, the, and the response was, well, you know how it is. Less is more, less is more. <laughs> That didn't answer. <laughs> uh, it's a nice so way of it, saying nothing. <laughs> yeah, and so I, I anyway. So so yes, yes. Yeah, so I've just kind of learned learned that. So it's a weird it's a weird world right now, I guess. And and I guess yeah. there's a time where we never had social media. So I guess it's that's, that's true. I look at, you know, How long time. was that shoot? Um, that was a, a couple of weeks. You know, I mean, nice. it was a couple nice. couple of weeks at the beach. There's a beach, and it's all local. That's and then, cool. And the the uh, the the um the castle interior was all on the warner brothers stage so, nice that's so cool uh, yeah that was that was very exciting that was a fun and it, you know it's a great movie too because one it's thing a I great thought movie well, and i'm you know i'm in just the beginning and then i disappear and i it's such a great movie i i i, I watched it a bunch of times as as, as you can imagine and yeah and, um, and uh i kind of forget about halfway through that i'm really in it but that's why yeah. i'm there like, i'm really <laughs> enjoying it Sure. And this is, I'm sure you can relate to this, is that this is why you go into acting, is that you watch these great movies and you think, oh, 100%. man, I'd like to be in, I'd like, yeah, and then you keep thinking, mm -hmm. I'd like to be in something like that, right? Yeah, like that. 100%. And this was, it was a fun thing because halfway through, I'd start getting that feeling of, oh, man, I'd love to be in a movie like this. And I thought, wait oh, a wait. minute, <laughs> I am. That's right. <laughs> what the hell? <laughs> <laughs> oh, hold it. <laughs> yeah, Dude, same. Actually, that's a good point. So you have a sister. And she sister. is the brainiac, but dude, you're also a brainiac. Listen here. I know a few things about you that I okay. might have that I might have read that somebody went to maybe a prestigious school I, and I pronounces did. prestigious correctly. You know? <laughs> <laughs> yeah, <that's right. laughs> yes, how you how you say it, yes, it says a lot about you. It's, that's it's, right. It's all about the emphasis. <laughs> <laughs> that's right. That's right. Uh um um yeah, that was that's a that's an interesting uh, that's an interesting uh, story because um, I always kind of feel like uh, I always uh, describe myself as sort of the you know my 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 dad was a professor there and and my, and my grandfather so there, so all these people were like these amazingly accomplished you know uh, scientists and yeah blah, blah, blah. that's so cool and, and now now I'm starting to understand that you know the level they really were at you know because we're when you're in the growing up and they're just like oh there's my weird dad or whatever right? sure he does he does science yeah something like that. <laughs> <laughs> something i don't know what he does yeah um in fact a lot of times when i'd go and i'd just see he'd be working on something and i'd be like uh you know trying to be a good son hey dad what are you work what are you working on there and he kind of look at me and he kind of go and he's realized okay i gotta be a good dad he goes ah and he goes you know it, it's too complicated it's too complicated <laughs> for you <laughs> that's right. I said, oh, no worries. That was just 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 that's asking. Right. No worries. As you I, were, as you were. I could tell my son I'm developing the Iron Man suit, but that's for later. <laughs> yeah, exactly. And uh, and so so he that's what uh, he uh, and, and so I just kind of described myself as sort of the the um, the George Bush of the yeah. <laughs> of the, of the Massimone family. Uh, that yeah yeah you know he went to Yale but yeah but you know that's um, right. Yeah. You know, uh, and, 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 and I used to joke, you know, cause I get that a lot, you know, when, you know, if you're an actor and you say, oh yeah, I went to, M you know, you know, from, oh, where'd you go to school? I went to MIT and inevitably. So it's one of those predictable responses, which is great of like, wow, you must be really smart. It's almost word for word. Almost yeah. <laughs> so my, my standard response has been, uh, well, among geniuses, I'm slightly below average. <laughs> <laughs> that, that's the title of your book right there, Toro. <laughs> <laughs> yes, exactly. Exactly. And, and, and the way, uh, and I was always more of a, a science, you know, I, I definitely love, I still do. I still tutor. I tutor like uh, oh, cool. calculus and physics and stuff like that. So it's, dude. yeah, it's really fun. And, and I realized I was, you know, I, I was worried that I was wasting my education. I felt bad about it. Plus like losing my connection with my family a little bit. Mm -hmm. but but it was nice and it's been really good and i realized that's as an actor that i'm really good one thing they can do is really like you know uh just because they've you know uh, uh um 
matured and evolved is they can't relate to teenagers the way sure, yeah. <laughs> that you and I can. That's right. <laughs> so, so that makes me a very good tutor. So I can, you know, I can just kind of relate to them and, and, uh, and it's been really fun. And, and actually it's nice. So I can pick, keep, keep my brain fresh on this stuff. So I think, and I realized in the retrospect, that was what I was meant to do because I sure. wasn't meant to do the kind of work that my sister, and my, my father are doing, you know, or was my father passed away, but mm-hmm. you know, and, and I was never meant to do that kind of work. Uh, which is which is caught possibly when maybe led me to becoming an actor. Yeah. <laughs> I didn't realize that uh, halfway yeah. through MIT, I realized, hmm, I don't know. Let me look into this acting thing. Is that what <laughs> it was? It was at MIT when you're like, I'm gonna I'm gonna go for the arts. No, no. Well, you know, I was okay. He, so here was the story. So I was yeah. so in the you know, and they always say this. I read an article in Time that they actually were far more um, influenced by our siblings than our parents, which is interesting because we that try to sense. identify identify ourselves. We find out what well what's what's my, uh, you know, brother or sister that they love so much doing? Well, what can I do differently? You yeah, know, I think that's- I, I did the same thing. Yeah, I mean, so, and you really see that a lot, uh, how everybody o- finds their job as the kids, you know, they yeah. find their, what their occupation is. And mine was, um, you know, and I was always good, because that was a, that was just a requirement in the family. You had sure. to get A's in math and science. I mean, that was the only time I really saw my dad actually really angry. I, I think I got a, be one mid semester home homework. Uh, oh man! Report. Oh. <laughs> on an assignment. <laughs> yeah, an assignment. Yeah, no, it's actually it actually a semester grade. And Oof. I remember coming Ooh. home. Uh, the only time I've really seen him, Matt, is so scary. And I remember walking in. It's I like a, a villain reveal where you see the back of their head. <laughs> the spinny chair. Home. Yeah, yeah. No, I I swear. I walked in because my mom said, "Oh, you got to talk to your dad." And Oof. I remember walking, in and I literally. He was there. Yeah. And I saw the back of his head. It's like a villain. It was amazing. And I he has a cat this. now for some reason. Yeah. <laughs> yeah. And then I felt this heavy heaviness in the room. It was, it was, I've never seen him that mad. So anyways, ever since then. So you had Oof. to get A's. Uh, and I love it. You know, I love math and physics and, and chemistry. And I love all that stuff. Uh, um, sure. But, but, you know, I just saw the level what it. Well, the level I, I observed going up, I said, you know, I'm, I'm not going to make right. it. You know, yeah. I'm not gonna, I mean, maybe it's possible. I was joking that had I not gone to MIT, I would have never become an actor because sure. I'm, I would have done the smart thing and become yeah. an engineer, like a, yeah. a smart person, you know, and said, okay, I'm fine. Sure. I can make a living at this. But I really thought, um, man, I, I don't know how I can survive in, in this world, you know, and, and, sure. and uh, you know, so, so, so I kind of, feel that that uh um but I, so i love this stuff yeah and i feel like you know maybe this was you know and it's, it's nice that i do both and i think you know it's not i don't know a guidance counselor in the world that could have come up with my career but yeah, it's for real been, <laughs> yeah. it, it, it's a good it's very suit i'm very suited for this because uh you know and and uh and i feel now that um uh now I feel like an MIT grad because now I'm doing one. There I'm, you go. Now I've gone, I'm done something with a degree that actually is very good because I'm being able sure. to expose some of these kids to, um, you know, uh, a certain way of thinking and all that sort of stuff. So it's, it's all, it's all, um, pretty good, but the way it all came out. So in sep- I show a lot of promises as, as an artist, actually as a painter and all this. Really? Yeah. You know, it's funny. I, well, I, I know, I know what, I mean, I, I know I love, like, I used to destroy my books doodling. Sure. Like, sure. Actually, like I'd actually ruin the structural integrity of the oh, notebook, yeah. you know, cause you, it's, of course. You can, and, and so, it, you know, and I get in trouble for it, blah, blah. But in an art class once, I think I was in seventh grade. Yeah. And I do stuff. I, I wrote, a, I wrote a play in fourth grade. Hell and, yeah, you did. Yeah, and and that was kind of neat, and uh, and that actually and actually got was so popular in class they showed it the rest of the school, so it must have been good. There you go. Yeah, so so I've always done that kind of stuff, and we you know always shot like stupid movies and stuff like that. So what I did all through um of course college, and so that was my intro to acting. It was really just something. I mean, it wasn't like I'll be an actor. It was like we were just let's let's sure. make stupid, stupid movies, you know, and and um and uh, um so. Anyway, in the seventh grade, I kind of, I can't remember what the assignment was, but I'm sure I wasn't paying attention. It was the one you got to be on. Yeah, but <laughs> I just started say, like playing around. I remember taking the paintbrush, dipping it. I don't know what medium we're working with. I don't feel like it was oil, but it's something kind of cool. It mm-hmm. was, definitely wasn't watercolor, something with a little substance to it. And I remember going in to make the bristle, bristles shoot out. Yeah. And I started like turning it. I says, wow, dude, it's so cool. <laughs> 
And then I started playing around with that and turned to this kind of really cool kind of abstract work that yeah. kind of had this weird flow to it. And and then I looked at the teacher's look at, over my shoulder. I go, holy shit. It's like, well, <laughs> I don't even remember what the assignment was. Sure. And I know I looked around. It wasn't like, it didn't look like anybody else. It's like, oh man, I, I don't know what I was supposed to be painting or drawing, but it was, <laughs> that was not it. But apparently it was close enough to what the assignment was. Okay. That she okay. thought I was a genius. Do, do you know what I'm saying? <laughs> like, he didn't he didn't literally listen he made he did an uh abstract expressionist right you know, version of it art <laughs> he made yeah. art. and i'm like whoa and and i go uh, and then we're like oh my god and she was just like in awe yeah. and then she showed it to the principal and like and they put it at the open house at this open house later dude and and then my mom you know and they you know, obviously told to my mom and she's showing up and as soon as she saw the thing she knew what was up because oh. <laughs> She's gone, oh. I, know, <laughs> like, you gotta, I know what he did. <laughs> <laughs> like, you got to start paying attention in class. <laughs> it's, just, it's like, but, <laughs> but, you know, but it is something that I, I, I feel like I, uh, I've never really uh, pursued. I think, you know, at the, at the time they kind of said, you know, it's like too bad he's so, so sloppy because he'd be a great artist. And then maybe I could have had I really, really, and I believe this, we do at the end of the day, we end up, you know, I, I think if nothing else, we're not, stupid people and we end up doing what we were really meant to do and we we know we kind of know our limitations and mm -hmm. you know through our own awkward way and the, through mistakes we make we yep. end up where we're supposed to be in real life and then i think that's you know deep down we kind of know what we can and can't do and i think you know deep down as a profession i don't think i could have been our or maybe i just didn't want to be sure you know? sure and, and uh but it's something i um did and I was kind of put on an art track there and, and again having to keep up the A's and I did love physics and calculus those those things I really enjoyed and so I really loved but you know my sister was the one that was you know getting the straight A but you know she and you know sure enough she became a scientist makes sense and that was always her thing but I was like sort of the you know creative one that could you know think outside the box you know yeah. what I mean yeah Main, left brain mainly, right brain yeah yeah, yeah. I mean mainly because I, I I didn't you know, even know what the box was. Yeah, <laughs> so, that was the secret. Sure. But, but, uh, uh, um, uh, I was just, the, the the key to my genius is my lack of awareness. I would say um, ignorance and, is bliss. Yeah, yeah, <laughs> yeah it still. is. It is. It is total bliss. And um, and so, and, and it is. You know, and I and I think that helped me a lot with acting because I, you know, I, I don't. Uh, I don't know about you, but these days I always joke. If I ever taught an acting class, I'd say. Or, or describe my process, I say, well, when I hear action, I turn my brain off. When I hear a cut, I turn it back on again. Yeah. Because you only need a brain before and after the shot, but you don't need it during, you got, probably yeah. should learn the words. Yeah, that's a good, it's a good start. Good start. Yeah, yeah. <laughs> words are good to know. Um, at least until I make it real big. That's right. Then, no, not at all. Then you have, <laughs> a, stunt, all. You, you have a stunt word guy. <laughs> stunt guy. <laughs> Uh, just throw the words in front of me. Yeah, so I, I'm just gonna feel. Just gonna feel. Yeah, yeah. <laughs> <laughs> yeah I'm. I, I've started attacking things recently, specifically because I've been trying a lot more things, and I'm like, oh, am I, I go for it? And they're like, can you do this? I was like, I don't know. Let's try. Because I don't even know. But you don't yeah. know until you do it. You yeah. know, it's like you can have the idea of like I could totally do this, and then you cannot. But you yeah. have to have that like ignorance is bliss. Like I'm gonna try it let's let's see let's both find out if i can do it you know yeah exactly oh that was a bad idea wow but, but but a lot of it you know even like for just you know basic dialogue i mean i learned the words and and i i've described it as i just aim and i pull the trigger yeah and, and that's what i do and and uh i think it works out more often than it doesn't I, or maybe yeah. after after all these years maybe it works out sure. more often than it doesn't and even sometimes when it didn't feel like it worked out um that's actually at least if nothing else is not self-conscious you know what i mean sure it, it's, sure it's what you said you know and 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 you know and so that to me is kind of the way, way i've been working which is something that um you know i i guess to differentiate myself from the way my sister works who's, and she's got every her level of planning is in detail is ridiculous. yeah <laughs> but that's why she's starting you know in a pharma startup and right i you know that's her superpower. That, yeah, 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 that's her superpower. Um, actually, I was joking with someone, you know, the I was uh, saying, what's your superpower? Yeah. And I was I was joking. I should say, my superpower is acting. <laughs> <laughs> acting? 
<laughs> That's my superpower. Yeah. Um, and then I kind of took it further and, and I kept on thinking, wouldn't that be cool if you're such a good actor that you could walk into a room or a set or whatever, and it could just, you know, and you had enough control over all, you know, the brain is such a weird thing, but you can control it to the point that it really, it's like a dream and it really happens. And you yeah. actually, like you, you actually completely transform the space, like to the point of like, you know, mental illness. Yeah. But it's like hallucination. Just, yeah. <laughs> like hallucination. Yeah, exactly. Yeah. Wouldn't that be cool? You could do That'd that. Great. <laughs> on control, you walk in and you hear action and all of a sudden, you know, it's like this weird world and dream you're in and then cut. And then you hear that magic, whatever is yeah. the safe word. Yeah. <laughs> yeah, <whatever. laughs> yeah. Pineapples. Then, Pineapples, ooh, pineapples ooh, toro. Pine pineapples. Oh. Like, oh, oh, okay. All right. Oh, no, oh, yes. Okay. And then oh. uh, back to one, back to one. <laughs> and uh, and I was not a dragon. <laughs> <laughs> and, uh, and, uh, and I just thought that would be kind of cool to get to that point. I don't know if it's um, possible or even healthy, but probably not but, safe. I'm not safe. Yeah. <laughs> to, yeah to those yeah. around you, <laughs> you end up with like a Hercules style thing where you wake up and you killed your family. You're like, oh. <laughs> but did you get it on camera? Did you get it? That's right. Did you get it though? <laughs> uh, That's but, right. but yeah. yeah. So anyway, so um, I guess, um, yeah. So that was sort of what my, uh, what I was good at. So anyway, so I'm going along sort of thinking and again, sort of in typical artist fashion, not even thinking about what's going to happen past high school, you know? Sure. I mean, sure. really sort of thinking, um, I, I guess I was thinking about it because that's such a given, you know? Mm -hmm. um, and, and and as I was saying, sort of the, the George Bush of the family, you know, I just sort of feel like, yeah, it's sort of like, yeah, I mean, really what I was expected to do, not just, I mean, it's kind of weird to just go to MIT and sort of feel like that was standard. Mm -hmm. But I remember a big deal was deciding not to get my doctorate because everybody, that's what you do, you know? And, oh, you know, sure. That was kind of a big deal, you know? Well, not even got, not going to be a doctorate. I'm going to become an actor. <laughs> so yeah. that, was a, yeah. that was a good, that was a good talk with the family. That was, sure. a, that, that was a good talk. You hit them with the one, two. Yeah, that's right. That's right. <laughs> Wait, it gets worse. <laughs> <Yeah>. <laughs> uh, um, and so uh, I was like, oh my God, you're not giving your doctorate. Oh, you're yeah, right. That's cool. <laughs> also, right, I would well. like to pretend. <laughs> <laughs> and so, and so, um, and uh, um, so, so, so I wasn't really thinking past that, but I was mm -hmm. maybe sort of wondering because I didn't know, like it didn't make sense to me, life after, you know, what, what is sort of prescribed. I mean, I admire it. Sure. And, and I always say that, you know, if I was, if I felt I was smart enough and competent enough to go down that road, uh, I mean, it's, I wish I was that smart, you know, I wish I could sure. do some of that crazy stuff, but why? You know, I, I play beer league hockey. I'd love to be a professional hockey player. I grew up in Canada, so but I, I don't I never I never had a chance in hell, but right. So I'll, and I'll you like your teeth. Beer. Yeah, so I'll <laughs> play beer league. You know, that's what I I can't, you know, I'd love to be a professional hockey player. I I, I never had the skills, you know, sure. so I, or the talent. And kind of felt a little bit of that. And maybe again, it was sort of just given the environment that I had, maybe it was a little um uh, um skewed you know our little sure little skewed. sure so maybe you know but but nonetheless nonetheless that's what i was sort of thinking but i'm just going to go on through things and um and as i say my dad's always like busy at work and he was he was a great dad and one thing i thought was very funny about him is that he he just worked he i can't tell you how many hours he put into the lab there and but he was knew enough as a dad to know that he has to have dinner with his kids so he'd always that's come cool yeah, he understood that he has to be there. Right. So he'd show up at dinner every every night, and he'd go to the lab back after we were done. But it was very funny because he'd show up, and then you know everybody would talk about, oh, did you see this movie? Or oh, what about what? Oh, you know what, Auntie So and So is doing. But and everybody's chatting. But I don't see my dad off the court. And, and as soon as he wasn't directly, you know, involved in the conversation, you see his head kind of go off. Off to the right, or I can't remember which direction it went. I think it was this direction. Sure. And he'd like this. Hmm. And then, and he'd always do that. And then finally, we'd say, hey, dad, yeah, so what do you think? He goes, oh, what? You know? <laughs> and then, um, and then he'd finish whatever until he wasn't required in the conversation anymore. And then he kind of like, back at the lab. <laughs> <laughs> again. And then every so often, he'd come up, bring up something that we was, you know, from like 10 minutes 
prior. You know what I mean? Like sure. he'd come up, he'd answer some question. <laughs> so, so that that's the kind of guy he was. So basically, amazing dad, and he taught me a lot about, um, uh, maybe ambition. I guess is the word, or or oh, cool. or, or I don't know. Work ethic seems like a weird thing, but just sort of what it means to pursue a dream. I guess which sure. we all need, right? I Very mean, important, especially as an actor. <laughs> Yeah, even just, I mean, even there, just working, you know, right? Even yeah. there, like, the, the, like there's no middle ground there, as, as we know, yeah. and, and it's crazy. And we have to go, we have to do it our whole, our whole careers, you know, it's, which yeah. is, you know, whatever, so whatever that is, because so it's, um, you know, that's something I learned from him. Um, but uh, so we rarely had, you know, sometimes we throw the ball, he played some baseball, he, I think, in, in high school. So every so often we throw the ball in the backyard and stuff like that. So a few, few, fa- father son things but there you go early did we hang out and talk so he comes over one day went to my room and i'm thinking wow he's actually he sits down i'm thinking this is this is crazy and i knew it wasn't yeah. anything bad because he was like kind of in a you know seemed to be in a good mood and i said okay father son talk okay what's this about here we go <laughs> and he realized and and i realized uh you know because he was a professor at mit that he could if i went there it'd be free Right, right. So he kind of says to me, he goes, well, you know, it'd really mean a lot to me if you went to MIT for, for college. And and I remember thinking, wow, because he's, yeah. and I find out all these stories during my dad's funeral. My sister's telling all these stories about she how he used to bring her over to the lab and he'd give her a little experiment to do and stuff like what? that. And, blah, blah. and I'm going, he never did that for me. <laughs> <laughs> Like she was saying how he was such a mentor for her like scientific development. <laughs> sure. Like, she put me off the corner and he gave me he gave me a little experiment to do. Blah, blah. I'm going, he never once <laughs> even suggested. Sure. He saw your videos. That's why like, <laughs> maybe, maybe not in the lab. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, yeah, yeah. Like, uh, can you just stay there? Stay away from the yeah. Yeah. he saw your painting. <laughs> like, maybe <laughs> yeah. not. <laughs> yeah, 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 exactly. And uh um and uh so so I was kind of uh flattered i guess you know because i never yeah. uh, i i don't think he thought i was a dummy maybe he did <laughs> <Like somebody idiot. laughs> he might have actually more i think about it, maybe he might have thought <laughs> and i'm sure my became deciding to become an actor only confirmed that but uh because <laughs> like, yeah, those are funny conversations as i'm sure we've all had with, with sure. Family. Sure. those dad conversations are the best oh yeah and, uh, um uh and uh so he and he's and i and so in retrospect, I realized, you know, I have, you know, friends that, you know, they're, they're thinking about, you know, their kids going to, off to college and stuff like that. I realized probably what he was going through, he was going through his finances. Oh. And he's thinking, you know, what would be a simple solution to this, this sure. thing that's coming up? If I could somehow get that idiot son of mine to go to MIT, <laughs> yeah. that would solve so many problems. Sure. You're like, and how about a new set, dad? <laughs> and I'm going, I'm going, ah. Oh. So he walked across and he, and, and I remember when just him saying that though really motivated me. Cause I thought, wow, I never thought you saw that in me. Yeah. And I just bust my butt and got in, you know, and, and, uh, uh I'm sure, uh, the connection, you know, his connection, my connection to him didn't hurt. And, and I think sure. sure enough, I think in retrospect, they probably saw that, um, I, I didn't have a phenomenal, I mean, it just wasn't my sister's level in terms right. of, uh, I, I just wasn't, I'm just, to, to this day. I mean, she's just better. She's sure. She's much, I mean, I'm good at what I do, but she's, she's, she's right. a very I'd good. argue you're probably a better actor. Oh yeah. Well, I'm, I, I just joke that, you know, whatever <laughs> happens after all this, I will definitely be the finest actors the Masamunas have ever yeah. known. <laughs> no go. matter what. That's your flag. Uh, See, yeah, the family no matter... <laughs> didn't have an actor yet. And that's where you showed up, Toru. <laughs> yeah, that's right. That's right. Yeah, I was, yeah exactly. And so, so, uh, but yeah, I think it does harken back to the whole thing of that, that we find our place within the family and we figure it and we just, I think that's that does influence what we do in life, and and yeah. uh, um, but I I did that, and I and 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 in retrospect, I think this is probably what the admissions committee was thinking, and I loved it, by the way. I sure it was a fantastic experience. It, it kicked my butt, and I got to say, there I some, bet you know. Plus, I was so social, and always you know, so it's almost like um, they had. There's a saying there that you, they said friends, sleep, and grades. Uh, two, pick two of the three, I think is sort of that. Oh. Sort of joke. <laughs> but I went for all three. And uh, uh, so my, you know, it made it very hard. And so and I and I didn't quite have the natural intellectual chops. Like there's one guy that was in my fraternity that was 
New Orleans total partier. Of course. And I'm almost thinking, and he's like a very, like he's been on ABC Nightline as an oncologist. Oh, like he's been leading that's oncologist. Awesome. Like, yeah. And he was always the brain, you know, he was definitely one of the, like he would always do his, the problem sets. We were both majoring in chemical engineering. He'd put the problems and he'd always, he was really cool. Mm-hmm. And the thing that he'd always be bed fairly early because he'd get them done pretty quickly and he'd leave all the solutions on his desk. So you knew that like it'd be three in the morning going, Ah, all right, I don't know what to do. And then you just have to go to this room and the solutions are all there. <laughs> there you go. Stuff. Yeah, it's kind of funny. But and sure enough, he becomes this very famous oncologist. And But at the time, I remember, but he's this guy from New Orleans and I was partying and I'd be partying with him. And I just think, yeah, well, you know, he's Deb was partying, so I'm good. And I said, wait a minute, he's a genius. <laughs> he's a genius, I'm not. I better go study. And so, um, but I kind of feel like um, so it was, it was, it was, it was a fantastic experience, but I got to say, I tried to do all three, which was a challenge. Sure. But, you know, uh, I think it, but I think, and, and I, you know, I guess probably like a lot of folks at, at a place like that, you always feel kind of dumb, you know? I mean, that's, of course, it's a different pool. Yeah. Those yeah, aren't normal yeah. people. <laughs> yeah. And you don't, and you don't, you don't really see anybody else. And also there's not any easy classes there. That's the weird part. Right. You know, like, like they don't have, they certainly there might be some easy classes. There certainly aren't any easy majors. So you have nowhere to run. Sure. Yeah. So, so if you're, you're saying, okay, well, oh God, this, you know, this, you know, whatever this, this, you know, uh, uh, astrophysics is so hard. I don't know. Maybe I, maybe I can try microbiology. I hear that's a little easier, you know, or something, <laughs> you know, like it's, just, it's kind of that, but let me try that for a while. Oh, Sure. It's hard too. <laughs> oh, what do I do? You know? And so, so there's nowhere to run. And so there, it does do a number, I guess, especially when you're like all of whatever, 1920. Right. Uh, it does a number on your, on your intellectual con, uh, confidence, I guess. And yeah, I bet. And, and all that. But I feel like in retrospect, and maybe it is after decades of, you know, working with these kids and, and I still remember, it's funny. I still, you know, I know I'll, I'll tutor some college kids too. So that's kind of nice. Cool. And so it keeps my brain sharp. And I actually remember some of the stuff that some of these there you go. Brainiac's colleagues have forgotten already. And so, and, uh, and I feel like now I, I feel, uh, now I understand the lessons I've absorbed from my family and from, you know, from being at MIT, blah, blah. I feel like I, I've kind of feel like I've earned a degree after all these decades. And, Hell and, yeah. and, and, and my, I, uh, and I think maybe that's, what the admissions committee either or they're just trying to like kiss my dad's ass i don't know yeah <laughs> one or the other why not both but why not both <laughs> and uh but they probably said you know he'll he'll be fine you know he's um he'll he'll uh, he'll come around and i think i so i feel that way that is you know has been a good thing and uh um you know and and as i was saying it's uh um it's not just a well it's a great it's a great place and and also it's kind of a family thing too because you know i knew sure you know, because my dad had his crew too, you know, he was with, he was with a bunch of other crazy scientists, you know, at the time that he was running around with and he was there and my sister, you know, so there it's, it's, um, you know, my, the, uh, so it was, re- it was really, I wouldn't do it any other way. And, and, uh, um, um, and, and uh, uh, yeah. And I, and I think there, I think it certainly feeds one's curiosity, which I, I feel like as an actor is super important. Yeah. Yeah. And what, another thing I think it taught me too, which is true, uh, and I think this is the nat- uh, I, I, you know, well, I think one of the lessons of there is that you can look at a problem, mm-hmm. and it can look absolutely impossible, and you can see no way in, but doesn't mean you can't solve it. Which sounds a lot sure. like an acting career. Yeah, yeah, that's all it is. <laughs> and and I've I feel like sometimes I've sort of treat this thing as like. A, a really a, a, a huge chaotic problem yeah you know that that fair. but 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 it's solvable you have to figure out different ways to do it as we know because there there's so many moving parts and plus i mean it's crazy you know and and so i i kind of feel like a lot of it is you know if you think of it as a problem that will persist throughout you know your whole life that you just have to solve yeah. Um, because we just want to work, I guess, you know, and, yeah. <laughs> and, and, uh, um, and uh, so, you know, and they're, they're the higher aspirations, which I think are nice, you know, and that's a whole thing. But there's also the funny thing is, is just surviving is, is, is a hugely chaotic problem. Yeah. I mean, and you could argue, 
it does fall into that category of you look at it and it and it just seems impossible. There, right. There, there's like, no there is no answer. <laughs> there is no answer. Yeah. yeah. And so so you whatever that is, and we all have our own solution to that. And uh and and the you know, um you know, so so it's kind of so there is part of me, I think I, I feel like MIT was a good place for me to sort of feel like, you know what? Um I've I've seen worse, you know, and, <laughs> yeah. and, and, and perspective and, at the very least. Yeah, and just being impossible is no reason to to if it's something you really want to solve. Yeah, there's yeah. The, you know, like you have to really. Yeah, it also begs that question: is do you, does is it really that important to you? And always, especially and, and, actors, and, you gotta yeah. want it real yeah, bad. Cause, <laughs> cause we probably all know folks that you realize that's part of the problem: is you don't really want it badly enough because uh, I'm not 100%. seeing any actions. You know, clearly mm -hmm. you don't and or whatever it is and you know or or maybe you know your people are enjoying that middle ground where they'd rather just be a struggling actor you know i don't know yeah um, it's true you know and, and that and that's a thing too you know that's a whole thing you know and that's fine totally. but but I, but I do i i i feel that that um that's that's part of the fun i guess in fact yeah. i had this well two things one well this was one of my this is one of my favorite quotes, which I don't know if it's my favorite quote. It's in Latin, and I don't know. So I don't know okay. if it's okay. my favorite quote because it's kind of a cool one and applies to acting. Sure. Career as a life, as a life choice. Mm -hmm. Or if it's because it's in Latin, it just sounds really pretentious. So I don't know why, which is more. I'll give it both. I'll give it both. <laughs> yeah, it's pretentious and <laughs> yeah. relevant. Wow. So how's that? Perfect. But it's, uh, it was, um, uh, uh, I think this guy, I'm not a religious scholar, so, but Tertullian, who was like one of the. Sure. He, yeah, I think he's the one who coined the 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 Holy Trinity. Mm -hmm. So I'm not a religious scholar, but I guess if you were, he, you know, that's that's kind of where his place was. Um, and uh, it basically says, uh, I think it is. Um, I'm going to say it's Caritum S Impossibility S Est, which uh, um, which basically says um, it is certain because it's impossible. And, and that's and that's sort of a, a description of faith, right? Yeah, yeah. And um, and so that's the part where I and and taking that a little further, in terms of an acting career, I, I remember I was tutoring some kids in stats, right? And you know mm -hmm. whatever, I'm just going through this college kid, and I'm just going through all these different hypothesis testing, blah blah. And so I saying, yeah, and so you know, so that based on when it passes this, if your p value is this. Then you're, um, then that basically says that you're, you know, um, there's a, it's whatever two or three standard deviations out, blah, blah, blah. So basically, this is impossible. Sure. And I realized I was just talking about, I realized that's when an acting, I, I was looking at an, yeah. act, an acting <laughs> career is statistically impossible. It's like, yeah. it's easily three standard deviations out, the number of people that work, and probably more than that. And so it is, it is, it is statistically, and I always qualify it being statistically impossible. Yeah, 100%. Agreed. Which, you know, and so, so, and then I always think about, you know, a lot of actors come into town and, or wherever they are and they think, oh, you know, I was, uh, you know, I'm a, yeah, you know, I'm a nice looking guy, uh, you know, pretty popular in high school. And uh, yeah, so I had a little part in the spring musical, and, yeah. you know, a decent voice. Yeah. Yeah. I think I can pull it off. I think I got like a 10% chance of pulling this thing off. <laughs> yeah. That's all it so takes. You, <laughs> yeah. So yeah. Just got to show up, you know, and, yeah. uh, um, and sure enough, um, you know, you find very quickly that's not the case. It's not even close to 10%. And then you start yeah. seeing the SAG. Then you start looking at the SAG things, right? Yeah. Oh, only 1% of the people are making a living wage. And you think, oh, there's only a 1% chance of doing it. But even that's a little weird. That's not really a, a good statistic. Nope. Uh, and eventually you realize that thing I came, realization I came to, if you run any legitimate statistical test, yeah, <laughs> it is statistically impossible. You know, yeah. like any corporation Absolutely. that you presented this study to would run right i mean it, it doesn't it, it it there it has no chance of succeeding yep uh, statistically speaking yep and so once i came to that realization and this is maybe the difference and maybe this is where mit helped me and 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 uh you know is i well you know or that quote you know i was telling you about i thought well that's when it gets fun because that changes yeah. up your whole game plan 100 percent, right when you yep. realize oh no no it's actually impossible so so does Abandon all that other stuff because yeah. that because it's it's a flawed strategy because mm -hmm. it's based on a certain probability of success, which of which there is none. Yep. You know, and so 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 that's the part I kind of feel like, and then you know, and that's that's 
you know, that's the thing I, you know, whatever doing the sibling comparison, you right? Know, yeah, she's, she's all on top and, you know, and clearly she has more money than I ever will. Have, you know, yeah. I, a lot of things. <laughs> that's how it works. A lot of, a yeah. lot of things. And she's just got a, a, everything. Uh, there, there's a lot of things she's got on top of that are very clear over the decades that her sure. way has been far superior. Yeah. And, um, <laughs> Depending on the race. <laughs> yeah depending yeah. on the race and and uh you, you know and and she, you know and she's working on some i think she's working on some leukemia drug or something like that and, and you know all this other great stuff which which i don't even i couldn't even sure. begin to, <laughs> i mean it, even just the process of putting together a startup is ridiculous what it takes you know yeah, that's like, why. like the organization another statistic impossibility almost I almost yeah know. well that, that we do relate on that she's saying the chance you know. of getting a, a a drug on the shelf is probably lower than yeah. uh, uh, getting a sitcom, you know? Yeah, yeah. <laughs> you know, like, 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 uh, it's, it's actually probably lower. So, so we do relate on that, that we're sure. both kind of taking immense risks. I but, like that though. Uh, I like those yeah. personalities where it's like, yeah. you have that reckless abandoned because that's where the heart comes in. I think, you yeah. know, you, you almost have to be like, I'm a, I'm a big Will Smith fan. He's like yeah. one of my biggest heroes yeah. and I love his philosophy. Cause he talks about one of my favorite quotes is being realistic is the most commonly traveled path to mediocrity. And I was like, oh, that's great. I'm gonna get that tattooed on my forehead. It's a great, great quote. And I think about that a lot because he, he brings up the idea that like, you know, hundreds of years ago, it was uh, unrealistic to think you could walk into a room and flip a switch and there'd be light. But luckily there were people that disagreed, you know, oh, and I'm yeah. like, that's oh great. wow and then flying like it was unrealistic to think people could fly in a metal tube over 100 years ago luckily somebody yeah. disagreed so i was like i'm gonna remember this thank yeah. you will smith it is weird and 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 that is that whole notion of of getting that pushback for anything and you know to this day um we deal with that every day as as, a, as an actor you know being realist that's a that's great that's actually a really great thing to hold on to because we're constantly reminded by definition that that that's a bad idea you know being unrealistic yep. mm -hmm. i mean i guess maybe by definition of the the word yep um here's a, a very small example of that which is sort of uh, you know because my hair you it's definitely longer than it's ever been for a while it's good hair yeah yeah you yeah it's really got cool. well, yeah, like, yeah that, i could that, see that, you could top knot that and i would be very intimidated <laughs> yeah, 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 yeah. That's what I'm thinking. And 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 now you look at my category, you know, whatever middle aged Asian male, uh, it, it puts me out of category by you know, when you think about most of the roles. Sure. Um th uh, that you know, typically and that's also something I've been sort of dealing with is is that um I remember early on, I remember always, you know, I don't know, they always they always cast the Asian dude as like the boring guy, the boring Crazy. smart guy that says he's the voice of reason. Right. I'm if I was going to be the voice of reason, I would have done that in real life and made a lot more money. Yeah. You know what I mean, <laughs> like I don't need to pretend. Yeah. And and I thought that even the idea of being like a really smart doctor was really depressing because I'm thinking, no, basically I'm doing this because I'm really not that smart. Right. Yeah. <laughs> so, <laughs> this is why this is what I'm relegated to. You know. That's so right. That, you know. So. <laughs> So, so, um, if I play a super genius, that's okay. I don't mind. But if I'm just sort of playing like the regular doctor that, you know, feels like, oh, you're coming, you know, though, you might want to look out for this. And I don't know, there's part of me sort of, sure. it's fine. And I like, appreciate work and I wouldn't turn that down, but I think, yeah, but it, for everything that is sacrificed, yeah. um, cause you know, we, we could have normal lives. We could have sure. actually had normal lives and, and we'd be, you realize those are the talks, I guess, with that is you realize after decades you realize oh that's what he was looking at right yeah <laughs> you think dude you're in fact he, i remember him saying that to me because you probably don't even know what i'm talking about you know right like, now now i see it because sure. i see my colleagues that i went to school with and i'm thinking without oh, exception right. even the dumbest guy has like a nice house right now <laughs> like even the dumbest guy like that guy <laughs> oh yeah 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 and he's um you know whatever <laughs> he's running the, the the cancer unit at so and so you know whatever you know but he did not carry leonardo dicaprio on a beach he, he didn't he i'm didn't, just saying he, he didn't he didn't <laughs> he certainly didn't and i do think that that's why i want to do really fun wacky roles because yeah. i think that's the payback Hell because yeah. if i just end up pretending that i'm someone that's just kind of this boring whatever mm -hmm. i respect that in real life but i just sort of feel like i want to play these really wacky characters yeah. because that's that's the payback agree like, you gotta have fun you can't take yeah, that physical then stuff sudden, with you but i get to do this and and sure enough i sort of see that i'm sort of the court jester i guess amongst yeah. these professionals and realize i had to i 
do the I get to do like stupid stuff and play these really weird roles, you yeah. know, and and that's the part that's fun to me. So anyway, so it's kind of, um, you know, COVID and whatever, and everything just kept on growing. And and uh, uh, and finally, um, my managers are saying, you know, because they're hustling, just trying to get me appointments, blah, blah. And, and, and they, you know, they, I, I, you know, what, yeah, I get it. I get it. They want me on a series and, you know, that's, that's, of and I, I want to be who on doesn't? a series too. Yeah. Who yeah. doesn't, who doesn't. And so, um, and they're definitely far, you know, for my category, they're definitely far more the conservative roles. I and mean, that's what, that's actually where I fall into as, you know, quote, Asian, you know, older Asian male. Right. I mean, mm -hmm. that's, that's, you know, I'm going to play the, you know, the doctor or the, you know, whatever, that's sure. who I play. And so he, you know, I said, you know, and I'm, I'm looking in the mirror, I'm thinking, it's like, wow, it's like, dude, <laughs> I'm kind of digging this look, man. I dig and it. All my, and all my friends like it too, it man. I'm gonna, cool. I'm gonna talk to my managers. I'm gonna say, cause they're, they're, you know, breathing down my neck about getting new pictures. You sure. know, so we, Always. You know just, they just need new pictures. Cause it's true. I get yep. it. New pictures yep. make new appointments there. I, I totally get that. 100%. so 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 but i'm thinking yeah it's like dude let's just go with this man let's yeah. go with this look and immediately i could see email back and all the managers start descending on like <laughs> chiming on the email yes i uh you know i echo their whatever blah blah right <laughs> and 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 i get it and they weren't being like sure know, they weren't being mean or anything like that but they were it was just sort of like this idea you know and it is true and I think that's why you have managers because they talk some sense into you because we're we do our, what we do and they kind of ensure that we can actually have a career. Yeah. yeah. And, <laughs> and, and, and I'm thinking, yeah, you're right, because all of a sudden it's not that they know they can cut my hair and they know I'm willing to for the right role, mm -hmm. but it does make it hard for them to get the appointment to begin with. Does that make sure. sense? Yeah, you gotta. It's, you, it's, there's it's, rules to the game that's being played, and, and it's and it's subtle. Even though that they know they could do that, if, if uh, you know, maybe there'll be a day where my they don't care. You sure, know? but I'm Hopefully. not there yet. I'm I'm just not there yet. Where my name, you know, say, oh well, well we can, you know, we can bring them on this. I I think I have a bit of a reputation, but I'm not. You know, I'm not. I, I'm. Mm. That's that. I can sort of see what they're where they're coming from. Is sure. I may lose a. a, a a few appointments because saying okay we need someone to play the whatever uh, and also or or the you know the conservative dad right is a classic asian male role right right Older asian, right did, sure oh you can't be that and go please dad oh my god it's like no i don't yeah. want to do my piano <laughs> lessons and go oh he goes you know i mean i i you know and there's that right sure sure uh you know where i show a little bit of heart at the end say, just oh. a tiny <laughs> tiny bit <laughs> yeah at the end where i kind of get that little cheer and says sure. i'm so proud of you and then yeah. then that, that <laughs> And then I was hug. wrong. <laughs> I was wrong. Oh, yeah. I'm so proud of you. And then, then we hug and, and all that. But, you know, and I and I and those are great roles, too. But I just and I realize there are a lot of that's a lot of it. I get it. Sure. And uh, so anyway, I'm some concern thinking and I, I think about it, I said, yeah, yeah, you're probably right. You know, and, and I'm kind of going. So I schedule a haircut and I'm not going to uh, chop it off. But at least get it reasonable. You know what I mean? Because this these days, these days. You know, there's, I talked, I've been talking to a couple of casting people like it, you know, that are pretty sure. high up that kind of know the gig, at least yeah. for TV anyway. If you keep it like shoulder length, you can still play professional, blah, blah, or it's easy for them sure. to picture. Or they're not thinking that, oh man, this guy's trouble. You know what I mean? <laughs> sure. You know, there's, yeah, he'll, he'll be fine, you know. And um, so I'm thinking, yeah, I get it. I get it. So I'm scheduled the haircut and uh, I schedule the pictures. Mm -hmm. um, really expensive these days too, isn't it crazy? It's, it's a lot it's a lot like remember back in the day when like 700 was like a lot and now it's like oh that's normal yeah, like, like, you want to go to the thousand now you want to go to the thousand dollar guy if you really are serious Yeesh. you know it's crazy. That wild <laughs> um and so so um so uh i scheduled the haircut and, and i guess this gets in the area of i don't know if i'm allowed to say this yet but i, I guess we sure. can see what but but i get this call on a um netflix show 12 seriously 12 hours after this email where i finally decide okay yeah you guys are right this whole thing and they say yeah we're looking for you know someone to play this you know hippie christian dad you know on this netflix show yeah uh and there's a joke in it about my ponytail right and they said you know pe you know people you know and, and it has a specifically japanese american too oh the kids have, the i know kids a guy 
Yeah, <laughs> yeah. The kid's half Japanese uh, on the show. He's the, the one of the leads, and uh, um, and and uh, so I go in, and and I, you know, whatever a month down the line, but I, I get it, right? I get the job. So I've been did a few episodes this Hell year. Yeah. So I'm not the dad. Now I'm on the show, this Netflix show, um, doing doing this recurring and and um, but that was interesting, right? Yeah, it's because, it's, because there's no rules. It's, yeah. you never, you know, it's like that. That's something I learned the hard way just last year. There's really no rules. There's the traditional right. rules that like, okay, well, if you want to be these things, you have to do this, but then yep. you don't and something else happens. I was like, yeah, yep. people only know their version of the game. And with art, there's, there's unlimited possibility, you know, it's, but it's, that's that weird space as an actor, because you're like, I, but I want to go on this lane because you don't know that other lanes even there until yeah. a few hours later. It's yeah, wild. yeah, yeah. Until a few hours later, you're yeah. for sure. And then, and then it's wild. funny because the timing of it, and it's funny because ever since then, it was like, you haven't cut your hair yet, have you? You <laughs> know, so that's kind of funny. Right. <laughs> uh, and so, so there's part of me thinking, at least now, because it's sort of a, um, well, I, you know, it's a father of one of the main people. And so there's, it's yeah. reasonable to think that I'll be brought up back next season, assuming there is a next season. Hell yeah. Which I think it's reasonable. And so I want to keep it within spitting distance of that. So I really couldn't, my hair grows very fast. So I wouldn't cut off more than a few inches anyway, but at least now it's sort of like this weird thing of like, um, okay, well that, uh, it's definitely got to be longer now. Yeah. And so now I can justify getting the pictures with the longer hair, even though it probably there you go. Back a little bit. Sure. And, uh, and in the meantime, you're auditioning for stuff where they're saying, Oh, dig the hair, man. See, and then all of a sudden, I, <laughs> that's my thing, <laughs> you know. So, um, oh yeah. So, and and actually, I kept on thinking the uh, autobiography is yeah. I guess Kurt's mask and possibility ask was one possible title, and then follow the haircut. I think. Ooh, another, I like another, it. Another one. So, I but, like but that, it. That that is the that, again much smaller level, but it is sort of that element of like risk, saying, okay, am I going 100%. to? And it's not even like, you know, and casting people even tell me this too, because they know they can cut it. They know that, but I think just to bring you in, mm -hmm. like maybe if you do a read or whatever, just to give you the appointment yep. or get you to consider you, it's that gut thing of saying, oh, do I see the, uh, you know, the pharmacist? <laughs> right. No. Yeah. yeah. You know what I mean? <laughs> but he could cut his hair. Yeah, no, this guy's a pharmacist. This guy's no pharmacist. Right. Or whatever. It's like if you could so, just have a little more imagination. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, yeah. But you know, or or put it this way, there are plenty of people in front of the line that already are dialed in. Hundred percent. And and, and, the, and then I can sort of see as a casting person, I think that's who this person is. Yeah. Yeah. And they, that's who they want. They said this person is this guy, as opposed to this person that you know, of course, when we all become big and famous, you know, that changes. Yeah, of course. And, Diff and, different lanes, different games. <laughs> different games. And and so we just gotta get there, I guess. But yeah. Um, it is cool because you've had a really cool career from like the different things that you've done. Because you've done a ton of voiceover too, which is pretty neat. Yeah, yeah, I've done, I've done a lot of voiceover stuff. Which, uh, interestingly enough, I remember back in the day with my agency. This is way back. Um, I never, you know, sought out to be a voiceover person, and, and uh, um, um, but back in the day, my commercial agent they just started their voiceover department, and one thing that's been interesting, I don't really think entertainment wise in terms of brace at all i don't know i just kind of feel like i mean i'll go with whatever but i'm not one of these people i get all upset about diversity or whatever i mean i i don't know again this is sort of my lack of yeah <laughs> uh, my whole lack of awareness and sort of thinking you know sure. and people have told me that he says that's what do you mean it hasn't held you back because I, I don't know i just kind of feel like if i'm right for the role i'm right for the and i'm thinking sure and they're looking at me going dude <laughs> it's like have you do you know anything about the world you know but that's my right. that's where i go about life and as long as i'm just doing your thing yeah as long as i'm hopeful so i i just kind of feel like um so i don't think too much in terms of of that but sure. you know and, and i and i do enjoy imitating my relatives so so yeah. that, that's part of i really enjoy about uh the, the racial aspects of sure asking um the uh, and they but the, what was happening is even in voiceovers is that for people even for cartoons doing Japanese accents or mm -hmm. Asian accents, sure. Um, it, it almost they didn't want anybody coming in that wasn't Asian, which is interesting because I have one buddy who's, you know, uh, uh, you know, totally like Anglo white, you know, whatever. <laughs> I mean, you couldn't get any whiter than he is, and and he um, 
he his dad was a Chinese diplomat and he grew up there. Oh, and he busts. Uh, he grew up in Southeast Asia or so, whatever. But his mm-hmm. dad was a Chinese uh, diplomat or was a diplomat. What would you call it? Uh, an American diplomat in China. Got it. This guy busts into a Chinese. It's a funniest thing. Really? It's so spot on. <laughs> and and sure. you know how when, when someone grew up around it, they're not just imitating the accent. They're Im- usually imitating someone specific. Sure. It's so dialed in. It's so dialed in. It's hilarious. Yeah. But <laughs> you know, he wouldn't even be able to get a voice over. And I'm thinking, you know, and he's better than I am. You know, that. Sure. So anyway, but because of that, uh, I got brought in a lot. And uh, especially with voiceover, I think they have a lot of video games or more Asian roles or whatever, blah, blah, blah. Right, so, right. And it was years before I even got any gig. I'd just go in and audition just mainly because I was Asian. You know? Right, right. And they'd just bring me in. Didn't book for years, seriously, like two, three years. I mean, it's a real yeah. long time. And then one point someone was asking me advice and I realized I knew a lot about voiceover. Yeah. Not because I had worked a day or right. even a minute, <laughs> but I had sure. auditioned so much at that point. Yeah. You know? You know, and, and I thought, oh, I actually know something about it. And and sure enough, you know, it's it's kind of moved into, you know, I, I did a thing on American Dad, which is. A yep. blast. I've seen it. I've seen it. Yeah. Yeah. <laughs> Gold. Um, 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 so you can, as you know, I'm quite shameless. Another another secret of my success is. It's uh, right. Of, hey, you did it. Well. And shameless. <laughs> what, so which one of your relatives was the clam? From uh, Kung Fu Panda. <laughs> oh, um, the, I have this uncle. Uh, <laughs> right off the bat. It, yeah, yeah. I mean, it, it's um, it's interesting because uh, my my dad is very interesting too. Because I remember my bit my my dad was sick, and so all his brothers came. His one sister, but they're all bro- mainly brothers, and mm-hmm. they all came in. Uh, you know, because because. Uh, I don't know if it's towards the ends for sure, but they're, you know, it's probably very serious and they're all walking in and um, they all walked in with, they had these overcoats on. This is back East. Sure. And just, the, I swear, it just looked like the a mob, um, the mob, the mob is showing yeah. up. I mean, it was just, it, <laughs> it was yeah, an cause event. They're all, cause they're serious, you know, cause they're worried about their brother is like terribly sick. And so they all walked in and it was just like, Oh my God, this is like, this is like the mafia. It's right. crazy. <laughs> and, um, this guy, uh, uh, he he was the only corporate guy. A lot of them were scientists and, and mm-hmm. whatnot and more scholars. But he's the one that he studied chemical engineering. And maybe that's why I, I ended up studying it. Cause he, and he ended up going to the corporate world, so petrochemicals. Oh, okay. And uh, the thing I loved about this guy, he was younger than the other brothers, but he was... Um, uh, you know, bigger guy, big guy. We have like some really bizarre but body shapes in our. Yeah. I mean, we have, we have one, I have one uncle that was like six something. Wow. And big guy, and then then this guy is like kind of, you know, little, you know, more. I guess probably closer to my height, but he's like big. He's you know he's a big guy. Sure. And he's got like you know curly hair on his chest, and like he's it's, it's, oh. he's got some really weird genes in our family. He's got all of it. Yeah, and <laughs> and uh, he and uh, he. Thing I thought was cool. He's always really well dressed, and you know, drew, drove around a Mercedes, and would always come home. And he lived. He lived up in when we were in Edmonton. He grew up uh, uh, where I grew up. Uh, my father was at University of Alberta, and then he came over because of the Athabasca tar scans and oh sure like petrochemical stuff up there. Right. So he's up there doing that kind of stuff, and he'd always come back. So I got to hang out with him a lot, and he goes. He he he's one that always took me out skiing on oh, ski cool. trips in my because my dad was. You know, like he got to introduce me to like normal family stuff. You know sure, I mean? sure. And and, uh, um, and he'd always come home, and he'd pour himself a scotch. Oh, that's so you cool. know, and drink it. And he and he was explaining because you know, uh, you know, and this is before he knew about any acting stuff. And he's kind of going, um, you know, if you really want to be successful in business, you're gonna have to learn how to drink. <laughs> <laughs> I mean, and, that's fair. Yeah, yeah. And he was saying <laughs> good advice. Yeah, and he's saying just start out small because you don't have to like drink a lot. Just but you should be able to handle like you know three day, you know whatever two or three drinks. Yeah, and you should be able to handle that without any problem. You know, he kind of knew that because I had that Asian blood that doesn't handle it too well. Yeah, <laughs> yeah, so, sure. So so um you know and so he was that kind of guy and he, and he would take take uh, take me out on ski trips and he was golfing very good golfer. Oh, nice, uh, nice. He's like a five or so. He's single digit handicapper. Ooh. So all this sort of stuff. So these are yeah. all the things I admired. I mean, yeah, you know, sure, all that. Yeah, <laughs> <laughs> yeah. I, I don't really want to solve the deeper, you know, problems of. Of course, uh, of course. Of 
you know, of, of organic chemistry, synthetic organic chemistry, but man, would I love to have a single digit handicap. Right. Yeah. <laughs> you know? Oh man. So I'm going to, I'm going to make, what was he majoring in? And um, sure. so he was that guy. And, and, and he was also very much that businessy guy um, and very concerned about um, uh, um, status. Of course. You know, and all this sort of stuff, because I remember when my um, dad passed away, um, uh, uh, I was um, trying to get him a, 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 an obituary in the New York Times, you know, because I figured, you know, he worked so damn hard. He Sure. Uh, you know, and that's a weird yeah. thing. About, but still, I, I feel you. Yeah, you know, I mean, you know, people put in their life, you know, realize you got, I mean, it's weird, right? Uh, uh, you realize it's kind of up to the kids to carry on the parents or memory or whatever it is and you got to like about yeah. a week because yeah. after that no one cares you know it's and so crazy the, the, and you have to plan out the funeral which mm -hmm. should be nice because you got one shot yeah you know he said well we'll do better you know next we'll, yeah, we'll right, yeah. mom <laughs> we'll try this. yeah moms will be even better yeah. <laughs> <That's right. laughs> this is the practice funeral <laughs> <laughs> exactly and so so you got one shot and then that was one thing uh, and uh you know, man, it's funny because I was doing a play at the time, trying to get publicity. I said the same thing, trying to get a get get the get, get the good obituary in the right, sure. in the right publications. It's as hard as trying to get a theater review. You know, yeah, and it's got to be news. There, you know, and I remember, I my mother and sister were thinking, "What? Do you, don't worry about it." Because no, it would be really important to dad to get this because he deserved. You know, and they were saying, "Whatever, it doesn't matter." You know, they thought we were just being ridiculous. And I remember my uncle who was. He was in Japan at the time, and he kind of comes in and kind of goes, well, if it's a matter of money, then let me know, okay? <laughs> and I'm going, no, no, I don't think that's, it's New York Times. They they just want, they don't care about, you know, but he was very much like. He's like, please. He was, yeah, yeah. And, and he was just, and then finally later, uh, I, I ended up having to go through the department head at MIT. And this is why I learned this stuff. From acting trying to promote it like you yeah you, your connections 100 percent. You, you yeah. hustle you hustle like it's one thing acting teaches you how to hustle and, oh yeah and and especially when you have limited time and i said oh yeah you know what i'm going to reach out to this person and they called up some of the new york times blah blah all blah. network so, and i didn't even realize uh and then finally i thought i had just failed i said well sorry dad and uh then i get then i get that email from him in tokyo and he goes i saw your father's obituary in the new york times this morning and he goes because you did a good job <laughs> and, and uh and but he was always very um but he was yeah very like aggressive business person and right very intimidating intimidating and being on top sure modern day and, samurai modern day samurai absolutely and and he was uh um and so so i i draw a lot from him you know a lot of the stronger characters yeah he had a very deep voice and and he was he was definitely like look you straight in the eye and 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 uh um uh, he wasn't quite as uh, um, uh, crazy as the clam. What was, yeah. the name? What was the clam's name? Kira Kozu. Kira, Kira Kozu. Yeah. 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 I know he, your work. Uh, the clam clan. But, yeah. but, you know, but I could sort of see him busting into that if he was pushed. You know sure, I mean? You're right. He had it in him. That's the thing. <laughs> yeah. Oh, yeah. 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 And, and, uh, um, um, I think, yeah. So, so, uh, um, so he's a he's a fun one he's a fun yeah. one. And my, dad, my dad is funny my dad i've used him before on stuff where because he thinks about everything and everything that comes out of his mouth is is so dead honest and thought out sure that it's hilarious yeah. and it takes a little while to answer but when he finally says it it's so spot on but, sure. but in a weird way you know and but it's it's because he kind of prost it and so I, I i've used that before um it's it's a little harder with tv because there's always that pace thing sure sure but, but, uh, I, I i'm hoping uh we did a uh, one we did one comedy where i was playing a, a marriage therapist we we um uh you know it never went past the film festival circuit but, but sure uh, but i was but that was that was good uh, but i kind of drew from that where you kind of take in the information and you come out with sort of um um objective you know the objective truth right and, right. and, and, and cuz i remember once this is towards the end and uh uh you know he had already had like so he's so stressed out um which is something i'm learning too is also as, as acting you have to have that drive and everything like that but i remember talking to my sister she says i don't think she says i don't think he ever thought he was successful and he was actually kind of depressed at the end but oh. but i realized it was because of the stuff he thought was 
you know, he wanted to win the Nobel Prize and he didn't, you know, and, and I'm thinking, sure. I'm thinking that's crazy that that's, but that made him depressed. It's like, right, yeah. <laughs> you know, like, I, and, and, and he, so anyway, he has some quintuple bypass or some crazy thing, right? Ooh. You know, towards the end, and, and he had to recover from that and he had to change his lifestyle. I bet. And, and all that. And, and, and they had to, so you have to learn how to relax. And he said, well, Ooh. why don't I call up that slacker son of mine? He seems to be good at it. <laughs> <laughs> and so I became kind of his mentor and how to relax, <laughs> how to ease up on things. And, sure. and, uh, and, and there were very funny things where we actually would do meditation together. Oh, nice. Yeah. And we'd go to the dark room and there'd be a guided meditation. And he'd be sitting there, <laughs> like, he'd be sitting like this. And he'd be kind of going, what does she mean melt into the chair? How do you melt into the chair? <laughs> <laughs> no, no, I don't know. I don't know how to describe it. Just, you can't melt into the chair, you know. <laughs> Pulls out a whiteboard and let me show you. It is improbable to melt it into chairs. <laughs> and and uh, and um, so there's. I think there's one point where um, well, there are two. Well, there's endless one-liners. There's one thing where I think we were doing the uh, checklist of what happens after the stroke that for occupational therapy. They're trying to figure out sure what's happened. And and one of the things was. Um, do you feel like you've lost your sense of humor? Oh, no. Without skipping a beat, he goes, no, I never had one. <laughs> <laughs> it's, kind of brilliant. it's kind of brilliant, right? Gold. <laughs> <laughs> that's a gold. <laughs> and so anyway, that's the kind of guy he was. Um, uh, awesome. um, yeah, so, but that being said, and this is, this is what will give us hope. Yeah. There's one point where uh, after he had the quintuple bypass, they had all these crazy amnesiacs or all these. Like, he was basically this is basically like tripping with dad because he's sure. like for he's flying high for like yeah. <laughs> 48 hours. And the the doctors were saying, well, just it's going to be weird. He's not going to he's and I thought, but that was my thought. And my mom, my sister were like, oh, my God, I can't take this. But I thought, OK, this is this is a good chance for me to like really have some. Here good we talks. go. <laughs> yeah. And there's one point where I'm looking at him and I'm so I'm like loving these conversations. They're all sure. over the place. And he kept on. And I saw that side of him that's in the lab because he was like, you know, you know, obviously he's kind of like out there, but he's kind of like directing people around. And I'm realizing what this is probably what he was like in the lab, you know, like sure. you know, conducting all this research. And, you know, I'm just kind of going along with it, you know, being an actor, right? I'm just going yeah, along of course. with it. And I'm talking with him. And then he's looking at me once and he, and he goes, and he goes, um, can someone shut, can someone turn off the TV for me? <laughs> <laughs> he thought he was watching TV. <laughs> <laughs> Which I thought was kind of awesome as an actor. I was kind of flattered, you know? <laughs> goes, can someone shut off the TV here? And then, uh, um, and, uh, and then later when he was kind of, we were about to leave. And he stopped me. He goes, oh, I just realized something. I go, what? And my mom just going, no, he's like, he's out of his <laughs> mind right now. Because, but I'm thinking, oh no, I'm gonna hear go. the real, the real good stuff now. Sure. And he goes, I just realized you can you can be two people at the same time. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, yeah. And he starts drawing these graphs. And he goes, yeah. See, and he, I don't know, he was like, he was out of it. So he goes, <laughs> yeah. he's drawing up all these graphs. He goes, yeah, so you can be two people at the same time. And I'm going, what do you mean by that? And my mom was just like rolling it. He goes, Let, <laughs> let's get out of here. You guys are ridiculous, you know? Right. But in retrospect, I realized somehow, although, you know, I couldn't, I, I wanted to write it all down. Yeah. Uh, but but I realized he, he theoretically, it is, acting is, is uh, you, know, you can actually be another person. Yeah, that's a job. You can, actually, <laughs> you can actually be two people at the same time. And I thought, oh, okay. So this acting thing isn't so crazy, is it? Right. You know? yeah. <laughs> that was the day your dad saw you. <laughs> <laughs> that's right. <laughs> it's that, oh, there you are, Peter moment. <laughs> yeah. So, so it was good. It was, it, so it was, um, it was, it was pretty wacky, but, uh, but yeah. Yeah. So, um, that's so cool. That that's yeah. like I find that mo some of the best actors are the ones that also have a life outside because then you can draw those experiences from, and then it's just more tools in your tool belt, you know. Yeah, I find that. I mean, I don't. Do do you do improv? Uh, I mean, little, in life. Oh, in life, in life. <laughs> I, but, I did but like four it? years of drama in in school, and that oh, was all. Okay. I was way better at that <laughs> than. Oh, okay. Acts. Um. Because I always found that, you know, because that's one thing I sort of do, I guess, in terms of training. I don't, you know, I, I always thought that I always kind of miss a lot of those scene study classes, but, but, mm -hmm. um, and uh, uh, I don't get 
cast for comedy as although those are my beginnings because everything I did prior to like becoming a you know pursuing an acting career was all like comedy you know? yeah of and, course and th those are all my beginnings because that's usually like what like my kids, first right? like three years were all comedies and then yeah, I, and I think that's the beginnings of any actor I mean I don't know if there's like some you know kid that's sort of you know acting out these dramas that's kind sure of yeah I mean, there's probably is. <laughs> yeah you know, let me do the Oscar winning moment, you know, you know right. I'm sure there is, but I wasn't that guy. I was just like every other kid just sort of goofing around. And yeah, you know, that's what acting was to me was comedy. Sure. And uh, um, so, so I, I, you know, I will do improv stuff. And one thing I've found is that um, uh, what I found in the class was I just bring whatever is going on in my week. Like I, it was almost like, yeah, therapeutic. Mm -hmm. And I, and I'd play out something that maybe I'm going through that maybe not maybe isn't a fun thing sure that really got me pissed off but it's it you know i play it out and and i, I found like that's actually good improv yeah if you bring your life into it and uh um you know maybe just like even the way a writer does that right and you don't necessarily mm -hmm. reveal its source or whatever and you know um I, I like that because then you see some reality and you see some humanity on screen agreed um, it's the truth because the it truth. comes from a place of truth yeah well, well there there's a time uh um i remember uh, another weird moments in my life another sort of like how did i get here is is uh is um you know i had that on um the ninja turtles i had that speech yeah you were shredder i was a shredder was awesome. and i realized i had a speech you know i had they yeah. gave me a full-on speech i guess wow what actually you get your monologue get a, a speech with like an imax camera pointed at you know like yeah, like, yeah it was my monologue yeah this is you know the stuff that you practice you do an acting class and you think wow yeah. i actually get to you know we want a three minute monologue you know and and it's funny because the whole that whole uh, uh, one thing i remember Deborah Zane, who's the casting person, because, wow, you got a real good view into the insides of big time filmmaking. Because, yeah, you know, yeah. even Inception is a little outside, but here I'm right in the middle of it. Yeah. Yeah. You're the and, guy. Yeah. And, 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 uh, so that was, uh, interesting. And, you know, even then I realized, you know, I just got to be well, I just got, I'm just want to do my job because sure. they're just trying to make a movie. And again, same wait. sort of thing where you just can't cause trouble and you just do your job. Yep. Even, you know, no matter what it is. And uh, and I've heard this before that uh, I think even Deborah Zane talked about that, you know, because I was joking with her later because it was so crazy how that how I got that job. And and she I was just saying just the way, you know, talking about the statistically impossible thing, blah, blah. blah and I was saying to mm -hmm. Deborah, we we're talking afterwards. And, and I said, oh, Deborah, he says, I figured this whole thing out. I figured out all of show business. She goes, what? She goes. And I said, it's all luck. Yeah. Yeah. <laughs> 100%. It's all luck, and all and, and and then she said, and she and funny thing is she didn't disagree with me. Yeah, yeah. <laughs> so she kind of goes, well, yeah, it's not all luck, and goes and it goes in because one thing that isn't luck is that you can mess up, because yeah. you can you if you if you mess up on the opportunities that you get, mm -hmm. that will that can totally stop you in your tracks in your career. Yeah, and she's telling some stories of some people that did that. Right, you know, and a lot of it seems to stem from it. it just goes to their head, and they sure. start acting weird, and mm -hmm. no one likes that, nope. and it it never leads to anything good. So that's one thing I, thankfully, I think I kind of was doing naturally anyway. So I just, you know, I said, you know, just trying to do my job, and they were, but they were just, it was just crazy. It's like they're changing. I told them, you know, was, I'd learn everything in Japanese and English, and I told oh. them, I told them, first of all, even if you're fluent, fluent, that's hard to do. Yeah. And, um, and they kept, I said, just give me 48 hours. I can do that. So obviously that 40 hours to turn into about a 20 minute window. Yeah. Pretty, and they were constantly yeah. <laughs> completely changing the speech, like completely oh, no. half the time. It didn't even make sense. Oh no. And all this sort of stuff. And I had, I had an onset, uh, translator with me and that's a lot of work for her. A lot of people think, oh, it's easy to translate. No, it's not. It takes oh, a while. Yeah. You know, it's a process. Um, it's a process. And so, so finally everything is for hanging out and, you know, they're, they're, uh, setting up. And, uh, you know, cause there's a lot of the, the fighting, I had a stunt person that obviously that sure. huge guy that was, who's amazing. With the big knives and stuff. Yeah. Yeah. I mean, he was, he was doing all the stunts and so I'm off the side and it's funny because at one point they go, okay, we need first team in there. So I said, oh, okay. And I'm all dressed up and he goes, yeah, we just need to have you. So you turn your head and it's like, you break your arm with these, with your chin and you just do it right into camera, you know, uh, you're <laughs> not into camera, but you know, and then face towards the camera. That's the shot we want to get. And so we did. I, I, you know, and 
And the thing that's cool about these things, these everybody's so good. The stunt people like could stop on a dime. Like, oh could, yeah, oh, oh yeah, everybody love stunt people. Uh, yeah, like like seriously, could would stop could with absolute control stop stop this fist like about you know an inch away from my face. It was amazing. Yeah, it's going like this, and I but you know into camera. It was great, perfect. We got it. All right, thanks. <laughs> this stuff for another like two hours. It's yeah. Like, you know, and I used to always joke, you know, because you, you, know, you get intimidated by these people. Yeah, of course. And and I used to always joke that, yeah, they're pretty good. They're pretty talented. Cause just, but can they can they do this? Yeah. <laughs> yeah. I don't think so. I don't think so. No, and so, no, 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 no <laughs> I don't think so. And uh, uh, and um, so finally, uh, everything and just the whole thing's just insanity. And I don't ever remember even going to craft services. You know, really. I mean, it was just like work. The whole, I mean, because I had to learn these two speed, you know, plus also it's, you know, you realize also sometimes your career comes down to these moments, you know, yeah, like, this is, this, this is, is pressure. Uh, yeah. And it's almost like, when's the next time I'm going to get a chance like this? Good point. Good you point. know, I mean, this is, you know, you get to do a lot of monologues in class. Yeah. Like you can yep. say, I'll, I'll, it'll be better next three weeks. And I guess, no, this, this is, <laughs> this is a rare opportunity, you know? Yeah. And, uh, and, and, um, you know, uh, so there, there's a lot of things where I just wasn't, you know, I, 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 yeah, I, I don't think I ever even remember ever going even to craft or whatever. It's just work the whole time. Yeah. And, uh, there's no sitting around relaxing blah, blah. and then they're always changing things up. And then sure enough, uh, just minutes, you know, I don't know, like I'm going to say 20 minutes, it probably was more like 20 minutes mm -hmm. as we're sitting there and we're working, I'm working my translator and we're learning about, I know I'm, I'm not. And, and this guy just slips over some some paper and he slinks away. And it's a whole new speech. <laughs> no. <laughs> and then my translator looked at me because she's on the line too, right? Yeah. And she's looking at me and goes, what? And I'm like, <laughs> I go, okay. <laughs> you yes, both just start this. crying. <laughs> and then finally she, and she actually started getting kind of mad a little bit at everybody else. She's, you're asking too much of them because she realized it's hard too. To yeah. Do That's both. crazy. Yeah, it's it's kind of crazy the whole thing, and then you know I'm on these huge Apple boxes, right? And so the whole everything was insane. Sure, you know, like it was like action, and I'd step on this huge Apple box and be like towering over, you know, whatever, mm -hmm. uh, uh, um, you know, Bill Fickner or whomever. Oh, I guess this was with Karai, so this was with uh, um, um, Manai. So, um, but the whole thing was just crazy, and how I even got there was insane too, you know. And so, so. And then she was, and she was just, and my translator was saying, is, you know, I got, I'm really admire you because like all this stuff's going on, but you know, somehow you're just like keeping your cool. It's amazing yeah. that you're doing this. And I just told her, cause you know, you don't understand this is like a gift right now because yeah, this, I know in the scene, you know, the reason why Shredder is so angry, right. And mm -hmm. kicking everybody's butt and, you know, you know, kind of shows it through anger. Sure. Because he's like, it's an insane moment in his life. Nothing's working. Yeah. And, and, you know, these turtles have once again, you know, everything. And it's like, and I remember sort of thinking to myself, okay, great. So I get my, my chance. I finally get my chance and you try and, you know, then I'm, and I'm screwed over at every corner. I'm right. not getting a chance to show my best work. Mm -hmm. And I was just saying to her, he says, you don't understand. This is a gift because this scene captures an insane moment. Yeah. In my life as it's capturing an insane moment in Shredder's life, all I have to do is say the words. Yeah. I don't even have to, I don't even have to act this thing because, and I'll let the camera catch whatever is going on because it's going to see your eyes and it's going to see the insanity mm -hmm. and the fear and all that stuff and the anger too, right? Yeah. And all I have to do is just let it come to the surf, you know, because it's real. It's, you know, and I thought, yeah, every thought I had was probably pretty real. It's like, okay, you know, I'm standing on, you know, in that moment as they're shooting and, you know, having him do things in both English and I don't know, the whole thing was just crazy. So, so I kind of thought, I just got, just run the camera, man. You right. Know, I thought, this is, this is, you're, you're capturing a moment in my life that close up with an IMAX camera that uh, is a once in a lifetime thing for me. And, yeah. and, and it's nice to be able to capture that. And all that stuff you're seeing is, is pretty real, you know, so all cool. that, you know, and I thought, so that's the part I think is neat. I, I love about acting is that, you know, maybe it's, it, it's nice to bring 
your life into everything because then you're, you're just not acting the moments but you're sort of telling us story i guess or you're sort of telling your own story as you go along and maybe that's yeah what you're and i think that's more interesting you know there are a couple of schools of thoughts on that but i I, I, I like that part of it and i think it's pretty healthy for us right i mean it's nice that we get to tell our story yeah i think so in front of people I and mean, that's part of it that's fun because there's so many times where you i don't know about you i think most actors are like this that you sort of think as much you know you may sometimes hate it but you think wow I, i'm living a pretty extraordinary life whatever it is it's kind of like pretty messed up yeah maybe but it's but. <laughs> it, but it's a story worth telling it feels that way right yeah i think you so. know and to actually have the opportunity to tell that story is neat and that's i believe that's what those moments are about and you know something you have to do through the character you have to be you know you have of course to the story of course. but it's amazing how close those things and you know like i almost feel like these roles we don't get by accident i agree and and, I agree. and and it's because okay this is a good match for you know your your mental instability right now we'll yeah exactly <laughs> to express your mental instability yeah. <laughs> going through something do it through shredder <laughs> <laughs> that's right <laughs> that's right yeah. <laughs> yeah feel like taking down a city that's hey right. <laughs> your doctor asked us to cast you <laughs> <laughs> that's right that's right exactly so 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 um so i like that i like that yeah uh, that you're not really running from your life or or you're not just performing a craft or you're this is what i do i i feel like you're sharing part of your life and that's that to me is i don't know if that's good acting i have no idea sure sure but but it um but uh uh it's um it's, it's pretty cool it's a cool uh, way of working i think and i and, think so and, and it translates helps. yeah it translates and so it helps everybody and i think it's i think so it's that truth when, when you can get that you know truth through and if it registers across the screen and you're like that's that's the that's the goal yeah you know yeah and, and, and i've always noticed too uh, i'm sure you found this too is like when you just feel like you nailed it yeah usually you didn't because yep. as an actor you feel like you nailed it but you know what was great? That previous take when you had no idea what you're doing. Exactly. When you're they, present. Yeah. yeah. And, they, and they saw someone floundering. Yeah. Yeah. And I said, wow, uh, that was human behavior, you know? And, exactly. And, you know, and so, so I, I uh, you know, and I'm not saying you want you to abandon trying to be, you know, good and accurate, but. Of course. But, uh, but I, I kind of feel like it's, it's often, um, I, I, I always welcome when everything's, it's not what you expected. And I think it was, wasn't David Mamet, right? That something create not, nothing and, or create nothing and deny nothing or something like, something mm -hmm. along that lines where mm -hmm. basically whatever's happening at that time, if you're feeling scared or intimidated or whatever, your character probably is. And I, yep. I do feel like everything's lined up such that that actually is very accurate. I don't think any of this stuff is an accident. I, I, I'm really starting to feel that. I agree. That, that, that whatever you, you were being put through at the time was required, you know, that was what was required for the show. Yeah. And I, yeah. You know, cause you know, I don't, I don't want to be one of these actors that's just very good at what I, you know, like I, I like it when um, people say, Oh, I'm, that person played it well. As right. To, oh, you were the person uh, that sure. the kind of actor I'd rather be is that, yeah, that was, well, you know, whatever, you know, that was maybe the thing I'm yeah. talking about. Right. Yeah. <laughs> that's, <laughs> that's when right. I became another person. He knew. Uh, he knew. <laughs> and <laughs> yeah. During the ground. Like it's so funny because <laughs> oh no. So you, if you look at and he's like right at the axes and he's kind of showing all these graphs. I'm kind of going, what, what are you saying? Like he'd kind of go in and out. And my mom was just going, Oh, guys, you guys are crazy. <laughs> she, she's, like, she's by the bed, because you guys are crazy. And she walked out. <laughs> she's like, I just, I can't. And you're like, no, 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 I kind of get the graph. I <laughs> said, oh, <laughs> can, can you and then, and then he, I think he kind of back passed out. After that. Right. Yeah. Of course, it's a lot of mental power to explain it to his slacker son. <laughs> yeah, that's right. Yeah, you know, uh, you know, uh, it's a bit too complicated. Uh, yeah, never mind, never mind. A bit too complicated for you. That's right. Uh, where, where, where's your sister? Uh, it's, yeah, exactly. It take much less time. <laughs> so yeah. Oh, man. So, uh, wait, how did how did you get involved with Ghost of Tsushima then? Because I just beat that recently, and it was oh yeah really yeah that, that was an interesting that that was that was your that was a straightforward uh, um um so that was just a straight on oh there is a story there's always a story right there's that's always why I'm here story. talk there's to always me. a story so uh, you know I I told you I take beer league hockey right right um so 
we're we have a practice, you know, just scrimmaging. Sure. And then, well, there's one guy on my team. Like I'm, I've always, every, I grew up Wisconsin, Edmonton, Pittsburgh, Colts. Uh, you grew Boston, up Boston, <laughs> and also amazing hockey towns. I moved to LA, yeah. which of course it's going to win the Stanley Cup, right? Yep, of course. So I've always <laughs> joked that I've always been the worst hockey player I knew, and so. <laughs> And that's the story of my life. And sure. but I love the game. I love it. It, it. To me, I was joking with someone about what it's like playing scrimmaging on the weekends. And sometimes you get a shot off and you can't imagine you did this. And I, and I explained it's like you're playing a video game. That's yeah. how I describe it to people. Sure. It's like you feel like you're playing a video game. No, no, I really did that. Yeah, you know? <laughs> that was my shot. And that was a, that was the play that I was in. That was like a, and it just feels like a video at its best. It just plays feels like a video game. It's amazing. Mm -hmm. And so um, anyway. So we have a scrimmage, uh, just practice or practice. And we're just doing a little, you know, whatever. I don't know what it was, five and five, four and four or whatever it was. And there's this one guy on my team that's probably about the same level in terms of skill, but he mm. hustles, he's crazy. And he always gets into fights. <laughs> and he, so he's, and he's a real like, hockey player. He's a nice guy, uh, you know, he's got a family and, you know, not a big guy. And I'm thinking, and he's the captain of the team. And I'm sort of thinking, you know, so you, thinking, wow, why is he, he's the nicest guy. Why does he always get into fights at, right around the net? But I learned because he was on the other, playing on the other practicing, because the, the shit you know, that he does like right on, right in front of the sure. net is, is <laughs> like, oh dude, I see why you get into fights all the time. Uh -huh. <laughs> so anyway, I'm going and we're just playing a scrimmage. And uh, I remember the shot, it came up and then he takes me out. Like my own guy during a practice oh, no. takes me out. And all next thing I remember, I'm behind the net, kind of falling back, and he's kind of on top of me. Mm -hmm. And you know that feeling when you just nothing, it's not painful, but you're feeling, okay, something happened. Yes. The uh oh. Fear anything, it's nothing serious, but you know, you fell back. And because I had that extra weight, I'm pretty good at falling. I've had sure. a lot of practice over the there years. You go. <laughs> um, uh, um, but when you have the extra weight mm -hmm. and the speed of it, just everything. Yeah. And so I felt gravity. Like, oh, Something, yeah, gravity. And I feel like <laughs> something happened. And then, of course, he says, oh, just try and skate it off. And, you know, I kind of was doing whatever. And, and it felt pretty bad afterwards. And, you know, you have your adrenaline flowing or whatever. Mm -hmm. And, you know, one of the one of the guys said, yeah, I just, you know, do put ice on it or whatever. And then a couple of days later, it was just getting worse. So I had to go <laughs> in, looked at. And it was just everything, like any injury. It's swollen. And it, these things get weirder the older you get, right? Because yeah. it's scarier because you think, what if I'll never things... come back from this. Yeah, yeah, yeah. <laughs> and plus, you always think, how does you know you don't can't imagine how the body's ever going to fix this thing. And so, right. And finally, I did the X-rays, and he, and he kind of comes back, shows me the picture, and he goes, "Um, yeah, this is not supposed to look like this." And it wasn't a break, but it was a little chip, so Oof. it was enough of a fracture, but enough to keep me on crutches for. Uh, I took about nine weeks because I'm such yeah. a win. And even my physical <laughs> trainer towards the end was saying. Stop limping because you yeah. don't need to limp. Because, <laughs> and I said, walk again. And I'd start walking. No, you, you're still limping. You don't need to because you're fine. <laughs> you're, you're, you're recovering. And, Come and on, so Ricky fine. Bobby. <laughs> <laughs> and so, so, um, so anyway, so I'm on crutches, right? So this is two weeks into it where mm -hmm. you really feel like, wow, you know, I've just pushed my luck. I mean, yep. who do I think I am? I mean, all these people saying, oh, be careful out there in the ice. I'm just, I'm Please. Okay. It's fine. Yeah. And I realized, okay, this happens. You're breakable. This, this is why. Yeah. And, and you don't know if your body can recover the way it used to all that kind of stuff. Right. Mm -hmm. So it was a little scary. Right. Sure. And uh, so I was on crutches and whatever. So I don't care about anything. Um, and certainly auditions are coming in and, and I'm thinking, all right, well, uh, I think, oh yeah, it was kind of slower at the time and there wasn't much going on. So it was fine. But then I got a, uh, audition for this mocap thing sweet uh and i'm going um yeah and i said no i can't do that i can't i am on crutches right i don't know if i told you <laughs> I'm on crutches right now but i'm indigent <laughs> yeah and 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 then they said yeah but they asked for you so so you can can you just go in? and i said fine fine hey. oh, and I, my job was just to show up dude because i thought you know because it's for them okay. i know my agents forever so you know i'm one of these people that i said you know what i like to uh do right by people or whatever whatever sure. what, whatever it is so i i don't even care about getting the job i just want to show up do my audition leave so i'm and it's sure enough it's on the second floor or something so i'm going like this <laughs> 
And I said, just as long as you know, you know, what the deal is. And I'm thinking, and also, you know how it is when you start auditioning and you kind of lose your mind a little bit and you're cautious, uh -huh. you know, and you can do things you don't think you can. Same thing like when you're, the, I don't know, whatever it is, but you start thinking you're safe and you're not at all. Yeah. Yeah. The last thing I wanted was, I don't want, all I wanted, I didn't want to permanently have a, have a limp or whatever. I, sure. I didn't, I, I, you know, and you worry about that stuff. Of course. Wow. Of this course. Is, this, this is how it happens. Yeah. And so I'm sitting there and I said, all right, I'll do this. And um, I was playing, a, um, it was the uh, the father. It was, oh, I think, cool. yeah, I, I guess I'm allowed to say that now because yeah, right. <laughs> I wasn't allowed to say this for, but I was playing sure. the father of the main guy, right? Oh, cool. And we had all these scenes. Uh, and, and so anyway, I'm just going, but I'm just going through the copy. I don't even care. Mm -hmm. And I'm thinking at first, okay, I'll put the crutch down because I can put some weight in it. And I think, so F that. Uh, um, and, and, and uh, um, you know, and I'm just sort of thinking, I am not going to hurt myself for any role right now. You know, yeah. I mean, you know, because that's serious, right? I mean, you know, you, it's just not worth it. I mean, you know, physical health is everything. And, mm -hmm. and so I said, no, right, I'm, I'm going to, I just told him, I'm going to do this whole thing on my crutches. And go, that's fine. And, uh, and I did, went through the whole scene and I did, did it all my crutches. <laughs> and I'm thinking it's a mocap, you know, thing and blah, blah. And I, at the end of it, I said to him, does this just look stupid? <laughs> you imagine being like auditioning and this guy shows up in crutches. Sure. And, and then I'm thinking, all right, well, maybe they thought, all right, well, got it from a hockey injury. Maybe that, maybe they might give them whatever. I'm just thinking this is so stupid. Right. Yeah. <laughs> I mean, this is, this is like this. Like this. <laughs> right. Yeah. <laughs> for my mocap. Jin, you know? come here. <laughs> yeah. But, the, but I'm thinking, cause I was playing a general. You know, right. I was like, because I was supposed to, you know, you know, the, I don't know how they, how they did it on the game in the end. Yeah. But, you know, I'm was sort of the, the general or the leader of the clan. Yep. Mm -hmm. And, uh, and sort of his, his, uh, um, you know, I guess his father figure or whatever. Mm -hmm. And, um, but I realized this is a good acting thing. Yeah. Maybe that thing, that stillness is what really made me look powerful. As yeah. opposed to before, I might have been like, oh, yeah, yeah, you know, you know, but but instead, sure. I was like this, like this the whole time. Very samurai. And that I was going like this. There's one point where I do have a motion where I talk to other people, so I'm going like this, you know, and you know, and even I don't even want to be there, so it's very kind of held back. Sure. Thinking, that probably like looked really badass. They're like, he's really controlled. Look at him go. And then and then finally finally I said, all right, here's that part where I had to dress the rest of the trip, and I go like this. Oh, perfect. <laughs> They're perfect. Look at that guy. And they, and they, and, they, and, they, and, and plus it started like I, I, I think I started getting really emotional because I was thinking, man, I don't want to, I do not want to hurt my ankle. You know? Right. I felt my ankle a little bit when stern, I moved. Stern. Yeah. <laughs> and I felt my ankle, and I'm all I'm thinking is like, okay, I know this is where accidents happen, so I'm just gonna be careful. I'm just gonna, and then yeah, I felt a little bit of the pain as two weeks in, mm -hmm. and also just thinking, you know, that I'm so screwed you know that that feeling of when you're injured sure sure and that all came out and that all came out my voice too you know so Perfect. so so uh um th th i got that and then uh yeah did a ton of mocap great scenes and then i heard uh they they cut the character mm -hmm. uh, so uh i think the character's name was great name too kazumasa no I'd have to look that. I think Cousin Must or something like that. But it was a, but I, uh, there was a really, was a couple of great scenes where I get off this horse and it was, my, it was, uh, what's his name? What was the lead? The main guy is Jin Sakai. Jin, Jin, the, Jin. the actor yeah, Jin. was Daisuke. And, and, and there was like where, where, where it's like the little kid. Yeah. And, uh, and they had a, uh, so I go up to him and I said, and it was his first kill. Yeah. And I had this whole speech with them saying, I remember my first kill and I talked to him. And basically at the end of the day, I'm saying, you know, son, it's okay to kill if you have a reason for it. If you have, if you're doing it for honor, I'm thinking, mm -hmm. what a great father, son, movie. son, it's okay to kill. Yeah. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> you, know? you want you know? those scenes as an actor. Yeah, yeah, yeah. I'm thinking, yeah. What a great, but like, yeah, that's what a, what a great dad. What a wonderful dad. Oh yeah. Like, right. You know, <laughs> you know, he's sitting there crying cause he just killed, uh, killed a man with, and he's holding a sword. Yeah. It's okay. I remember that. Yes. You know, says, but it's okay. If you do it with honor, there's nothing wrong with it. And so and I get back on my horse and so there's tons of stuff like that. And there's, I think I'm allowed to say this. Yes. Uh, what? Yeah. This is, a game's out forever. Um, <laughs> 
but we do this like weird suicide thing and and really cool stuff like really epic stuff yeah um you know i guess they all they always have reasons for cutting characters but my god cut i did a few other voices and i did a, some of the choreography for it some of the oh cool stuff, really kind of neat yeah so i got a credit as a as a, a stunt my first only stunt coordinating credit. get it a that, little a sword choreography i I, and they, I don't know if they use it i'd have to i'm a buddy of mine just played the game he's showing me but i didn't i didn't see where the actual choreography it would be be the ass oh and it's funny because i'm good i've doing it a long time and i'm good but i'm not like some oh, you know, cool. crazy expert from yeah in japan but there's one point where they asked can you come up with something that you know both Jin and also my buddy uh um that played the teacher and uncle yeah yeah, yeah lord shibura uh, yeah 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 yeah. Uh -huh. he's a good friend of mine and and so we uh cool. and he said something those guys could do so i went through this whole choreography that i thought was pretty decent and i sent them the video and this is the line i used was i i believe that um you know the these moves are probably you know simple and straightforward enough for for eric and you know uh, and daisuke you know yeah. like i'm like my my the way sure. i couched it was I, I tried to figure out something that was simple, look cool, but was very simple to execute. So I think, right. I think they'll be fine with these. <laughs> yeah. so that was how you worded it, saying, I, Perfect. you know, yeah, yeah, right. as opposed to, yeah, I didn't want to give you anything too crazy. These are the white belt moves. Enjoy. Yeah, 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 exactly. <laughs> I have a few others, but, you know, I, you know, I, I, I want to keep it simple. I want, I'm looking out for you guys. So anyway, that's right. But, but they did give it. me, uh, they did give me a uh, uh, credit as a, a sword choreography consultant and so that was kind of neat to have that it would have been nice to actually have that character because of some cool stuff and who knows why they did it why they sure. did it but uh that was that show business i guess but but that's how i but that was a that was it but that was a funny thing that uh, getting it was was do, actually doing the mocap yeah that's so cool on crutches perfect I'm, I'm almost thinking also too if you know and it's funny when you're injured because you're very straightforward and honest so which i think is i think we always have to be at state as, as an actor just not trying to sell yeah. ourselves and get a job sure and, just, and and i think all of all of a sudden it probably so i realized probably in the end it probably sounded kind of cool that i bet it oh, did this hockey an injury and then i think it had the other effect of actually that's what and i remember that that's the way i should handle these type of roles anyway yeah just you know is the presence. stillness presence yeah. stillness and that presence again real life is i don't want to hurt myself yeah but you know there's no reason why as Kazumasa, that that wouldn't be happening anyway, right? Yeah, it's true. You know, you know, like I'm, I'm dealing. I'm, I'm sure I'm quite broken up, right? I'm all yeah, right. It's a samurai, if, if I, of course. I'm a samurai. I'm, I've got, I'm hurting all over. And you realize that's professional. That's one thing I, I think about every time I really get really active. I think you, you wonder why all you, you know, all your athlete friends or you know, professional athletes are so busted up. Yeah, yeah. You know, they look great, but they're busted up, and that's that. That is a guarantee. If you do enough sports, yep, hundred percent. And 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 then you know, thank God, you know, it's not, you know, I'm, I'm I don't have any anything permanent right now. But that's, you know, we all have friends, high school athletes or whatever. Mm -hmm. You just got to use it. Yeah, and they're and they're just saying, "Wow, I'm I'm this is what this came from." I said, "I don't want to, I don't want that to happen because it makes it hard too. Because then we can't." Um, then you can't even like work out properly to just stay in actor shape. You know what I mean? Right. It affects you know, everything. Lot, yeah. I mean, there are a lot of things where, where, um, you know, plus, yeah. I mean, who wants to be compromised physically? I mean, that's just not fun, you know? So, so anyway, um, but I did realize though, that I thought that stillness and um, was something that probably made it work. Um, but yeah, but that's how I got it, you know, but, but, but so yeah, cool. I guess there, I did, it was a straight audition, but it was uh, also, uh, there was, there was the crutches thing. I forgot about that. But yeah, it. we did it. Yeah. And many, 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 uh, months as all video games, you know, these are gigs that you do once every few months over a couple of years kind of thing. Sure. And, uh, sure. So who knows, maybe, I don't know. Uh, um, um, what, what is that? The, um, what is the downloadable content? Oh yeah, yeah, yeah. DLCs, they're always adding DLCs. to stuff. Hey, they know you're willing to work injured, you know. <laughs> yeah. Well, and also they have it. You know, they have they have everything. Oh, that's true. That's true. They, I mean, they we we shot a lot of stuff and I I think they were pretty cool scenes. There were definitely a couple that I felt like I was doing a Kurosawa movie, it was, it, you know, so Oh, it's so cool. Yeah. I mean, and, and thing that, that I have you, have you have you done mocap? Mo have you ever done that? Not yet. It's on my bucket no. list. 
I would, uh, I would recommend that as a thing because it, one thing I just explained to someone, it, it's you're in this big white room and it's very mm-hmm. silent, and very few moving parts. Everybody's kind of working on their computers. Oh, okay. And, and it's huge and there's just a grid and you have everything. So they're doing the close up, the wide and the, uh, you know, the medium all at the same time, right? Oh, okay. That makes sense. So you don't have to worry about anything. You don't have to worry about camera angles or anything. That's cool. So you're just like a little kid playing in your backyard again. And so one thing I found too, because it's so quiet and I, I kind of learned this in general too, is that, and I, and, and this is also what I'm trying to discipline myself. And I say discipline because actually it's more fun doing it this way is when I hear action, especially because it's more quiet because they kind of go and action. And there's kind of this, because it's very lit, you know, it's yeah, very yeah, yeah. light and for fluorescence. So it's not like mood lighting. Sure. So, so it sounds like, it feels like you're in, in a, the, visually it looks like, feels like you're in a gym, high school gym. And then acoustically, that's very good. So it's sort of like, okay, and action in this huge room. And I just learned, okay, basically what they're saying is they got, you know, you have to do that. The, the, you have to do all these weird things before you, they start shooting. Sure. Just for them to calibrate. And then, then you say, um, then I remember thinking to myself, okay, what they're really saying as opposed to action is, okay, we're getting out of the way now. We're done. We're ready. Right. Get out of the way for you. When you're ready. <laughs> yeah. It's more when you're ready and sort of, sort of like, okay, good. So now I know. And then, then I, then it really is, then you can go into your backyard and start thinking, okay, let's play this out as if I'm in my backyard. Yeah. You can do that because you don't have to worry about anything, any camera angle, any how loud or soft you're going because it's all there. You know, everything's captured and uh, you don't, you know, and if you start thinking, oh, this isn't, uh, yeah, you just don't have to worry about anything and they'll fix it all in post, you know, they'll. Right. I mean, it's all, they're just trying to get, yeah, they're just getting information. So you just kind of really just play it like you're with your friends in your backyard. And uh, sounds so fun. Yeah. That, and that part was, that part was really neat. Now you do have that big helmet thing, so it's not perfect. perfect. But I'm thinking, well, I guess if you're a samurai, you're going to have some pretty serious headgear anyway. So I guess that's true. That's true. um, You know, but then they, you know, they have fake horse. It's, it's it's pretty neat. It really is very, um, in terms of, getting back to basics, you know, going yeah. on, on into the backyard and playing with your friends. It gets, it start, it feels much more like that. Sure. So, so um, that was cool. So that was the neat thing about it. So yeah. And you know, it's funny. I wasn't really that, that disappointed when they said um, they, you know, obviously you always feel a little disappointed, but it wasn't like, cause I got to do it. Right. Yeah. You still have the experience. Yeah. And that I thought, you know, and I don't know how much, these things really help an actor's career, you know? I mean, sure. I think if, if you're fam- like, you know, if you're famous, I think, you, I don't know, I kind of feel like at the end of the day, even for stage, cause I'm a stage guy as well. Mm-hmm. You just got to make a TV or film and then you can, yeah, that's, that's everything. The out, then, then you do all the other <laughs> stuff. Then you yep. do all the other stuff. And then I, I kind of feel like that's the order. It's not the kind of thing that you just work your way up. I think you got to go to the top. And then you get to do all the things that you want to do. Yeah. Yeah. That's how it works. That's how yeah. it works. <laughs> so, however, I remember I was hearing that too. I remember I was hearing actors complain about, oh, it went to a name. And this is, again, maybe this is sort of the MIT sort of problem solving approach. Uh huh. I remember sort of thinking, okay, well, that seems to be pretty apparent. I, and I thought, okay, so, so how do you become a name? How does that happen? You know, and, right. and, remember, and no one ever had, and actually, there's one agent that I had. Um, this is right after I, I ha, uh, got the shredder thing. So I'm feeling pretty, pretty cocky. Pretty right? good. Yeah. Yeah. And I'm sort of thinking, okay, cool. And I'm, now I'm starting to get all these meetings with agents and all of a sudden, and I, in general too, is I've learned that it's also important just to be yourself because I don't know. I mean, I don't know if that's the re- even the wise thing to do. Mm-hmm. And I was, I, you know, I know my sister was saying that to me about some, some interview I was going to have, uh, not, not a, uh, it was for a gig. Sure. Uh, you're being with a director. And I was sort of, uh, she was saying, oh, just be yourself. And I was joking with, uh, well, I think in most people, that would actually be pretty good advice. I would say in my case, maybe 70% is probably more advisable. Yeah. <laughs> you know, so, yeah. So, so um, same, same. Yeah. Right. Right. Yeah. Because, <laughs> yeah, because, uh, yeah. Like, uh, I'm, a, it's, I'm a lot. <laughs> yeah, yeah, yeah. yeah. But also, when you're just kind of goofy, it's like it doesn't give people confidence to hire yeah. you. I think sometimes, and so yeah, I'm with you. So, uh, but you know, I'm thinking, 
I, that's the mood I was in. And I said, so I'm just going to be my goofy self. There you go. So I, I'm sitting there during this. Uh, so this, the, so all of a sudden the interviews with, you know, how the, usually those are so stressful usually, right? The yeah, of course. Great. And it's just the worst, right? Yeah. Representation. And so, I, but I was all, and that's, I, I guess that's probably how you get, because they offered me a place right after that, you know? So they offered me, made an offer right after that. So I think maybe, maybe that's the way to go is maybe don't follow those rules. Um, that's and right. Yourself. And so I went and uh, there are two questions. Um, um, well, I'll, I'll, since the, the first one actually is referring to what I, what I just referred to. So I'll tell you, tell you this one first. Mm -hmm. um, there's one point where I'm kind of going, you know, at the end, they always ask you, oh, do you have any questions? Mm -hmm. always ask that. And there were three of them face this way and, and you know i'm just on a couch right that's just how they're you know they're the three agents yep yeah we're talking to me straight on and you know we're kind of talking about stuff and then and i just said um yeah yeah actually i do have a question um i mean uh, i want to get to know you guys i mean what are your guys dreams Smart. and i and i swear i went <laughs> and I took my arm back. Like, Lean back. I'm conducting yeah, the interview yeah, I, now. Yeah, I said, yeah. No, I said, seriously, this, I want to get new. So, I mean, what are your guys' dreams? Smart man. And I went like this, cross my legs, dead silent for a little while, right? For a few. Yep. And then finally, and I swear, one by one, they started answering. Yep. You know, the connection. Person, yeah. And then finally, someone said, yeah, well, I'd like to have all my clients work on this. Oh, that's cool. That's cool. And then one person even said, well, I'd like to have one of those condos on Ocean Drive, you know? And I said, and then it was nice because it actually turned into something good because I said, Oh, you mean the, that big high rise? And I said, I always buy drive back by that thing. And I was wondering who lives there and why am I not one of them? You know, and, yeah. <laughs> and sure. but, but it cut it kind of made them it's it was actually a good interview thing because they realized, okay, this guy does care about being successful. Yeah. You know, and having money because we want him to be booking. We don't want one of these actors that right. care about money. We want we like people that care about money. And so so there's there's that. And then finally, um, so that was that was later. And then, but earlier, I remember I was just asking because I think, okay, here's some professionals that are on this end. And I, <laughs> this is another one of the questions that goes, yeah, may I, may, I wonder if it was still during that question period. It must have been because it, it was a question. Yeah. <laughs> and my other question was this. So I guess it was, yeah, okay. I had a, and I had another question here too. And I swear no one will answer this for me. I don't know why, but how exactly does one become a movie star? <laughs> I mean, seriously, it's a valid I mean, I, question. Yeah, and I said, no one will tell me. No one will tell me. And then I think he, one of the guys was saying, well, I knew Brad Pitt back in the day, blah, blah, blah. And I can't remember what he was saying. What would you sure. tell me? He said something about, uh, you just keep doing your thing and it happens all of a sudden. He said, it usually it can happen. And he said something about it. it can happen from one good scene and one good movie. Sure. That yep. can do, you know, and you just keep doing your thing and you hope you had that one good scene in that one good movie and and uh, then then you take it from there so so who who knows what it is but but there was that part of me sort of thinking uh i think there's we're limited in what we can do till we get that and i don't know and there is no answer to that no nope. you know i guess i guess that's you know we just got to keep well yeah so so i um um i agree yeah I so, think so, it's, so it's kind of interesting so anyway but that being said um uh, you know, I, I, uh, um, you know, the voiceover, the mocap, all this stuff. I mean, I love that stuff, but I, 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 um, that's why, oh, that's what it was. I, that's why I wasn't too heartbroken when they said you're cut from the role. Sure. Sure. Um, it's kind of cool. Cause I would have loved to have seen it. And one of them, the, the guy playing the uncle, whatever, uh, mm -hmm. I couldn't remember the guy character's name, but, uh, he's a good buddy of mine. So that would have been fun seeing us in the scenes together, but sure. But uh, yeah, that's a great game, though. Beautiful it's game, a right? Beautiful game. Uh, and as a massive samurai fan, it's like beautiful. Oh, are you a samurai fan? Ah, uh, dude, obsessed. Even oh. as a kid, just massive, massive. Oh, we could, shoot. We could, sure. do, a, oh, we we could do a whole other show about that. Yeah, we should do a whole other show about that. Yeah, yeah, <laughs> yeah. Because that's uh, that's something that. Um, yeah, no, I've been doing the sword stuff for. As I say, I don't know. Like uh, sometimes I think maybe I'm better than I realize, just because I haven't. Hell yeah. But, but I've been doing it for a couple of decades and I'm working on actually working. I have a buddy that we've been working on this one style with like, like I've been doing this whole thing with these double sword stuff. Oh yeah. Which is a little flashier than like, like I would learn more, you know, the katas and you know. That's what I'm learning. I've been doing um, Iaido for like oh, six dude. months. Yeah. Oh, okay. Okay. So, okay. So you know what I'm talking about and yep. this, but it's kind of interesting though, where, you know, it's, 
you know, there's sort of the Kurosawa style of samurai fighting and there's sort of what we see in movies now. And so yep. it's sort of like you have to find that balance because it's uh -huh. not like wushu where it's like all right technics. Yep. And, you know, Kurosawa could pull it off. You know, like that one scene in Seven Samurai where he comes running in. Ah! Oh, yeah. And then one guy just does that one cut. And Boom, like, that's all it takes. Yep. Yeah. And but I don't know if that plays with today's audiences. I don't know. So, right. so, so we'll I, I, yeah. I, I, I want to you know, do both, but but it's been pretty fun kind of doing this. This I guess it, it's pretty cool kind of dealing with the double striping, you know, just basically just drilling just to the point that it's. Yeah, it's like Kali. Yeah, 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 yeah almost. Yeah. And, and I'm thinking, too, because I figured it's probably going to help my golf swing. You know? Yeah, <laughs> there you go. <laughs> you know, and, and I like actually what a buddy of mine who's who's kind of working with me on golf stuff. He kept on talking about the golf club. He says, just it's just a tool. Yeah, and I love thinking about that. It says, "What if, if the sword is just a tool where you're just cutting something down?" Yeah, that's what it's all about. And Precision if you think of it technique. That way, yeah, and and it's sort of like you and you don't get so precious with it because you're trying to do something. And 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 it's kind of so I've been playing around with a lot of that stuff. And I think at once COVID's over, this one guy I know that does, um, uh, uh, we're going to try and probably put together some sort of demo or try and shoot something we have one guy that's a pretty good dp and and uh shoot some stuff so that would be kind of nice to see how all that works but um hell yeah yeah i love it well oh, dude wow. well, we should we did for two hours look at us i know right <laughs> yeah well we well, now we have another show we have to do on samurai fight. that's well, right maybe, Done. maybe I'll, 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 Done. I'll, I'll i'll let you know when uh when i have the um uh the samurai the the demo thing so i dude, can uh, say when say when i'll come and help then, then then i'll uh i'll uh I can be pitching it. This That's right. My... That's right. I'm in, yeah. dude. Let me, we'll figure it out. We'll we'll put our heads together. We'll we'll figure it out. Yeah. Okay. I didn't realize <laughs> that. Okay. I wish I'd known that earlier. We could have. Yeah. Been, yeah. That would that would have taken two hours right there talking about summarizing. That's right. Next but, show, dude. Next show. Next show. You have to come back now. It's 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 on the record. But dude, yeah. this was so fun. Yeah, I appreciate totally. you hanging out with me and like this was this was a blast. This yeah, could have been well, a five hour podcast, but you actually have things to do. Yeah, so, I know, right? <laughs> so uh, before I let you go, though, I have to ask, where can people find you online and stuff you're up to? Yeah, just uh, um, uh, Instagram is at, I think, my full name, Toro Masamune. Perfect. And uh, I'm going to say Twitter's probably the same thing. Perfect. So you go to those two. One, uh, I'd say Instagram. That's yeah. probably, that's that seems to be. I mean, I'm, I'm not a big Twitter guy. I, I, throw, I, I do the... Um, just, oh yeah, post my Twitter too. Yeah, and I never, and I never follow up on it. I really, then I go, I find all these messages of people send me stuff, saying, you know, I'm thinking, sure. oh man, I, I must be like such a, <laughs> like such a jerk. Like I post this stuff up. Just, That's right. This is, a, this is a one way conversation, just so you know. That's so, right. I'll read but, your notes but, later. I'll read your notes later. But Instagram, <laughs> I, I, I do check. So, so you, so that I would say, yeah. Let's, let's just stick with that. Instagram. Perfect. At Tora Masamune. That's it, right? At Tora Beautiful. Masamune. It works. Get that SEO. I love it. Dude, thanks so much. Yeah, thank you. Hello, friends. Thank you so much for listening to this episode of The Interesting Podcast. If you'd like to follow the show, it's at Pod of Interest on Twitter. If you'd like to follow me, I'm at Jedi Brian on all social media sites. You can also find me at brianbalance.com. There you'll find all my demos and a bunch of other fun stuff. If you enjoyed this episode, please share it and tell your friends. A good rating or review always helps and is greatly appreciated. Let the people know we've got some cool stuff going on over here. Speaking of cool stuff, we now have merch. Just search The Interesting Podcast on tpublic.com to get you some sweet gear. I've also got a Patreon, so if you'd like to support the show more directly, you now have that option over at patreon.com slash jedibrian. On that note, special thanks to Bernice, Chris, Ben, Jim, Daz, Kelly, Daryl, and Victor. Your support means so, so much, and I cannot tell you how much I appreciate it. So until next time, be well. <laughs>